Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Witchlight. We would absolutely love it if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. But please be advised that tonight's episode will contain some themes that are not suitable for everyone. Thank you. Very dark. While we do that, let's read some comments from episode 43 of Once Upon a Witchlight. Quote number one. I could feel the awkwardness and passive aggression when Gideon kissed the pixie to get his flame back, and Kremi's just stowing, uh, stirring the stew, which somehow then turned into Gideon becoming a Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Torbeck is a big hairy mushroom, mushroom, lives in my head rent free. Mine too. Yeah, me too. Uh, number three, time. you guys are my inspiration to become a DM. The Ooh. way you weave Aww. all your stories together gives me the motivation to try making my own world again. Oh. Number four. Good luck. Everyone shut up! New Witchlight just dropped! And lastly, <laughs> number five, I love Mikey's mushroom metalcore. Uh, secondly, did anyone else picture that sixth Carlfish waking up and finding his friends missing, leading to the newest Disney Plus movie, Finding Carlfish? <laughs> <laughs> so, leave a comment below, and maybe next time yours will be included. Also, be sure to check out our merch shop, exclusive campaigns that you can only find on Patreon, and become a VIP at thecrookedmoon.com today for our very first Kickstarter. Thanks for watching. Roll that beautiful bean footage right <gasps> Once upon a witchlight hour, the sleeping queen stirred in her tower, and through grand halls past lock and key, came to her slumber dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright, the second love defiled by spite, the third a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own, but soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken. Something blighted had come hither, foul as nightshade creeping thither. From yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, his wounded heart had one desire. A ballad from the dreaming queen could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, but toys would be his shield and spear. And so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, the prince first found a toy of wood, a doll set, beasts and wild things. But listen close and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear, a song that calls the spirits there, a song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal, a rocking horse with ashen mane, Around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame with mighty hooves and sturdy frame. No better steed one could proclaim. He searched from autumn's harvest throne. The prince then found a toy of bone. Lettered blocks stacked to the sky when turned to words could only lie. Deceit known to the hounds of hell makes for a potent hex or spell of souls, of sin, of shadow fell. Through winter's chill, from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass. Marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion. Each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. When season stopped, the final day, at last the prince found halves of clay. He shed a tear, this would not do. His favorite toy was split in two. It stank and had a horrid face, but in his heart held special place. Through toil this crack he would erase. The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toy is placed in a chest with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower for either outcome, sweet or sour, and makes a wish for love, for power. Once upon a witch light hour. The sands swirl around you as the sun blazes overhead. You're standing in a stone circle of mushrooms carved out of limestone and painted in bright paints. The brush strokes still visible, though weathered by both sand and time. Around you, the desert stretches for as far as the eye can see. 
The only thing that breaks up the monotony of the sand are two large obelisks off in the distance that reach towards the sky. The wind picks up, and you are pelted by the grains of sand as if the desert is pushing you back, pushing you away from venturing further. But eventually, the wind calms and relative peace returns. Sweat beads on your brow and you feel the heat drying out the flesh on your lips. You instinctively yearn for water, but none can be seen. It is just the eight of you, the scorching sun, and miles of sand before you. The, the eight of us? Oh, that's right, we have the yep. mushroom friends. You have, you have twig and your mushroom friends. Guys, why did we do that? Oh my god! And I want to, because I don't think I did this at the end of last session. I'm going to try to scoop each of our little friends into a big schmason jar with a little bit of water at the bottom and a little bit of like oh, yeah. sand. If the I rain is still coming down from my crate or end of toy water. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna mm. get some some water and I'll I'll poke a few holes in the lid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you guys good? Well, I don't know. Can we get some of that water that's coming down? <laughs> it immediately evaporates. <laughs> oh. Oh. Accurate. Uh. <laughs> are they alive? They are alive. Immediately. They're right. thirty, flirty, and thriving. <laughs> <laughs> um, d does my apron act like a? Well, no, there won't be air in the bag of holding. Can't pass your trip to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, who wants to hold on to these? I shouldn't be responsible. Oh, <laughs> why is Mr. Grammy looking into our bag? I'll, I'll take care of them. I can put them in my pack. I'm going to remove my robe anyway. It's too warm for this weather. Does that mean we can all get naked? <clears throat> Torbeck's sweaty and damp. Well, I think you can you know, dress for the occasion, just don't fucking get naked. Oh. Yeah, you gotta remain covered. <laughs> All right. Uh, Torbeck would probably take off his coat and what he could take off of his shredded, horrific uh, shirt and just wear his amazingly awesome striped pants. <laughs> 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 the tube oh, becomes more visible. You guys can oh, see shit. more of it, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't think that we're in the Feywild anymore. How do you know that we're not in the Feywild? What if this is some, like, desert area of the Feywild? Well, maybe did... we're in Yon? Oh, that's a good point. Is Yon a desert? Did we already skip the, 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 the? Well, we were in the, 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 the and then now we're fucking here. Was, I mean, there was a third spot. Well, I ain't never seen anything like this before. It's gone from a platinum run to a speed run. 20%. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, thank you, Rosie. <laughs> if we are no longer in the Feywild, which is my suspicion, then every minute that goes by would be potentially days in the Feywild. We may have already, just in the last few seconds, lost our opportunity to satisfy any of the deals that we made. Help any of the people that we've told to help. There could be years racing past us with every word I speak. Oh, no! Oh, God, what have oh. we done? Man, I hate the Feywild. <laughs> can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can we somehow go back? Is there a way to, to undo this? We should try to reverse this. Oh. We, we should try to get back using the stone circle, perhaps if we try the same incantation backwards and run the other direction. Does it look like we're in a fairy circle? It it looks like the fairy circle that you left, but instead of being organic, it is limestone carvings. It looks like Nekbeshin statues. Um, they have uh, like picta pictographs on them. Um, they are bas well, Yes. I, I, I don't know oh. about bas relief, but I would like to address <laughs> the DM. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? I would like to, looking around at the different stone relief uh, uh, symbols, uh, sort of get a sense of if they tell a story, if they feel connected to the magic circle, if they give instructions for uh, returnal to the Feywild, if this is perhaps a two-way portal. What languages Feyternal. do you speak? Oh, uh, I speak. 
Did, did we know that we needed eight people to do this? Like, did we know that, or did it just that happen to work because they left in? That was not spoken to you, okay, but okay. it worked because they left in. I would say yeah. you you were easy enough, it was easy enough to tell that they were doing something intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Should be reasonable to assume that we could try with six, and we would think that that would work. Yeah. Yeah. In my studies, <laughs> I learned celestial and elvish in addition to common. Whoa. Uh, roll an investigation check. Damn. A disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> I read pretty good. Fifteen. You don't speak this language. Huh? It's not in a language I'm familiar with. I'll study it for you, a bit longer to see if I can do anything. You do look anything. at it a bit, and you notice, um, you notice what look to you uh, as much as you can deduce like wands. Um, you do see what appears to be um, images of people uh, moving Wittershins. Um, and that it looks, uh -huh. I will say, with a 15, especially at disadvantage, uh -huh. you do notice the constant theme of the moon um, in high in the sky, um, oh. about midday. Um, <clears throat> but it does look like the sure. images on this, uh, on the stone circle, uh, depict the way to make it function. I suspect that using the circle is laid out in front of me. Yes. And you and said that the it, when, moon it would, in the sky midday. Or sorry, not the moon, the, the sun. The oh. sun in the sky midday. Mm. Ah, <laughs> noon. Yeah, oh, no. not, not, I just, I have moon on the brain all the time. As so. that happens, I look where the moon is now. Do I suspect that we're approaching midday? You sun, suspect sun. that the sun has passed midday. <clears throat> well, I see the problem here, Frosty. This isn't a language at all, man. This is like children's picture books. <laughs> well, yes, these are pictures, but yeah, around it looks it, like they're, a they're... guy bathing. Then this one looks like maybe he's enjoying a coconut Ooh. under a tree. That looks pretty good. Oh, this one really looks nice. like maybe he's eating too many coconuts. Probably a child's fable a about overindulging yourself. I don't think this has anything to do with no, what is, we're looking for. I suspect that you're completely off about all of these. Well, this one's an owl, and this one's like a weird oddvark donkey thing. What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> that one kind of looks like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Spitting image. <laughs> oh, anyway, man. how fucked are we, Frost? Well, we uh, have a choice to make. We could pick any direction to go in and hope for the best. We could endeavor to journey to those obelisks there in the distance, or we could wait until midday tomorrow and attempt the ritual again. Uh, I could spend those 24 hours trying a few ideas, but I may only be able to whittle it down to a few options. Each day that goes by, we'd try another and perhaps fail, and then another and perhaps fail. We'd run out of water quickly. Eventually, we would die here in the desert. Wait, so you're saying we can't go back right now? No, no, I'm making that deduction. We certainly should try. But uh, yeah, the fact is, is that midday, midday is past. So. We arrived exactly when that pictograph uh, depicts. Uh, there's, no, there's no question in my mind that if we tried now, it wouldn't work. We've got 23 hours and 47 minutes to wait. Oh, God. So, uh, well, I... W they, they put all these, uh, it, like, portals all over the place. Like, it's got to end up somewhere. I mean, the one that brought us to the Feywild was in the carnival. There's got to be something around. There's got to be some reason it sent us here. Or like, they, like some reason they have, like, uh, you know, some crazy magic tunnel that ends up. What the hell would they need to come just to the smack dab in the middle of the desert for nothing? That's interesting. I have an idea. Does this still work? Does this still work? Over. Yes, I can hear uh, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're coming in loud and clear. I heard that if you're in the desert, you should split it up. <laughs> I think that what we do is, as long as these work, we each go in a direction, and we just agree to turn around and come back after a certain amount of time, and we see what we find, and that will determine what direction we go in. Where did you hear that? Ah. <laughs> uh, Oh, uh, you know, somewhere. And we're right next to a crossing to the Feywild. If we split up, we could turn around and never find each other again. That's very unlikely, Frosty. Because we are, are, according to what the, 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 the 
Campari and Soda said <laughs> is that we're back on the, the we're back in Aventress. Mm-hmm. So oh, it's no there's right. no there's no Feywild magic here. Well, who said that? Did somebody say that? Uh, yeah. Then we would cross back over to, yeah, that's, the, uh, the pixies the told you that. that the, uh, oh, oh, yeah. that the fairy that. circles would bring you to the material yeah, plane. Oh, so we know memory. Wow. Man, uh, we're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have second sight, don't I? Oh, yeah, I'm crazy, so that, that explains that. Oh, yes, you still are uh, experiencing the lingering effects of the spores that that uh, creature oh, seized you, in your face, correct? You are experiencing that. What's, what's your vision? Uh, oh. How far out can you see? I just, I have normal, I don't have, like, dark vision. Crummy, quick, what are your crazy eyes see? <laughs> Roll a perception <laughs> check for me straight. Ooh. Your eyes are, like, on top of your head, you're ambushed by it. I was talking to that squirrel over there. <laughs> That's another one of the pictographs. Uh, perception, you say? Mm-hmm. Hey, boomers, remember Mr. Deeds? Uh... <laughs> 16. Wow. Oh my god. You, <laughs> that's a deep cut. That's a good yeah. movie. Yeah. That's, that's a fun movie. movie. As Frost is talking to you about um, how he is deciphering the images on these stone mushrooms, you look around at the desert and you see the way the sun shines off of the sand and the way that it sparkles like gems off in the distance. The way that uh, if you look in certain directions, the heat and the, reflect, the refraction of light can cause it to look like there are pools of water, but you uh -huh. are familiar with mirages. And they don't concern you as much as the strange glint in the sky that happens every once in a while, as if a, fra as if a bit of light is hitting something and then bouncing back. And it's almost for a second as if you see um, a star popping in and out of existence, but it couldn't be a star. It's a light. It's something. And occasionally, you'll, in the corner of your eye, when this happens, oh. you'll catch what almost looks like a, a spark of rainbow off to the side, a kaleidoscope of colors that appears for just a split second. You don't happen to have astral projection. <laughs> Kremi, you seem distracted. There's, there's an eldritch horror in the sky, an enchantment in the light. I see it. I, I look where I he's see looking. Do I see, do I see anything in the sky where he's looking? I'll roll a perception check. A disadvantage? No, just Triple normally. disadvantage. <laughs> just the DC for you is different than it is for him. That's not how this game. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> how dare you talk back to the DM? Thirteen. Uh, no, you don't notice anything. Mm. You look up at the sky, and it's it's difficult to see what he's trying to tell you. The sun is so bright and so warm that when you look up, you're shielding your eyes as you look towards this beautiful blue sky, completely cloud cloud free. And you look for any signs of rainbows or uh, flashes of light or refraction or anything of, of that nature, and you see nothing. Don't you see it? Crummy, you're just going crazy, man. That's no light, that's just the sun. No, don't, no, no, Don't no. look directly into the sun, Crummy. A flash of brilliant pl 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 pluralescence. I, I, I see every color. Okay. You don't see it? No. Uh, okay, no, no, we just see the sky. <clears throat> we, it, we're in a desert. You don't it's think it's that? What, Gideon? You don't think no, it's that no, crazy no, winged beast to follow us here? Oh, oh, God. We try to get away from? You don't think it's like flying around up there, do you? The Elden Beast of Viridian Scale? <laughs> oh, gods, I don't think so. Does it I think it had more of a nonsensical, whimsical <laughs> name than that. <laughs> Only Kremi was able to see the beast, and until he sees it, I don't think we're in any danger. Oh, yeah, wasn't it in the forest? He doesn't live in the desert. It's a forest uh, beast. It's was like it? a star at... at, at in daylight. Said it was like zipping in and out of reality or some shit, man. Maybe it can just, I mean, we moved over here from right where we were. He was right not too far away in some kind of shared space. Maybe he just followed us. Well, then we die. Is the Jabba Jaw coming? Do I see it moving? Um, you'll see it in one spot and then you'll notice it behind you or oh. off to the side. Oh no, it's moving all right. Oh God. <laughs> oh jeez, I think it might be stalking us. Do we go towards it, or do we go away from it? Or is it all around us, Premi? Tell us what, it, it, it doesn't happen very often. 
So it's it's not like you're seeing. So I'm fine, and I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Minutes will pass. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you fell? You, you fellas can't see this. We didn't experience the spores, Remy. Torbeck is sure that Torbeck doesn't see anything, Mr. Krammy. Torbeck is right. worried about you. Okay, it's fine. I'm just going to try to ignore it. It's probably nothing important. All right? Uh, I don't think we can follow it. I, I don't think it's trying to lead us in a direction that keeps moving around, and I only see it occasionally, but it's gone now. Mm. Okay. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Should we run? <laughs> Should we run? I, I don't know. I don't well, think we can escape it. My final flight response has been triggered. Should <laughs> <laughs> so, you tell me which direction to run, Crowley? I'm about to run in about three seconds. <laughs> it's too fast. Three, two, one. Stay here, Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> I just start running. I bolt. I bolt. <laughs> Crummy, I want you to roll another perception check for me, please. Oh, Come on, this baby. Is Toa's dying. Come, on, baby. Come on, baby. Ooh. Oh, 15. Oh. Yep. You up, notice, man? with a 15 and your true sight, you notice that it happens less above you and more in the sky along the horizon. No, it's not directly above us. I think it's... It, it does happen above you. Oh, you fuck, it is above us! <laughs> you, you notice it more often along the horizon. I'm not sure what to make of this. But. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Grico sprinting to the horn as fast as his tiny legs can carry him. Yeah, Grico's done. The which, Jabba Jaws upon me! <laughs> <laughs> which, funny enough, is not very fast. The sand here <laughs> is. <laughs> The sand here is high. It is not packed down. It is <gasps> persistently moving with the winds, and the winds pick up constantly and swirl around you. He's made it you three are feet. moving uh, through um, difficult terrain, and as much as he's trying to rush through this, it is difficult, and he's we not making it. Right. He's like, what? Oh, he's like, right there. With my ten foot reach, I just pick him up by his. Uh, it's like walking through the dunes when you go to the beach. Guys, I'm, oh, you're right there. <laughs> uh, uh, Gideon, Torbeck has a question. What's going on, man? Uh, Torbeck is slightly concerned with all of this sand getting in Torbeck's mechanisms. <laughs> is this going to be bad? Oh, it ain't going to be good, I'll tell you that. Uh, can you, know. you check? Torbeck out, please. Yeah, I can take a quick look at it. I mean, there's not really anything out here to weather treat it, but I'll uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a you know the old uh, I'll give it the old Goblin College try. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll turn around and I'll kind of like squat down and hunch down and look over my shoulder and say, Ah, but what if one of Torbeck's pipes burst? <laughs> Torbeck will bleed out in seconds. Yeah, well, yes. Well, no. I mean, you know, the chances of that are happening are like forty percent. All right, you're in the you're in the positive category. Forty. It's the lower half, man. I mean, it's sixty percent. It doesn't happen. Uh, check for rusting. <laughs> no, all right, I'm looking. I'm looking. I take out of my uh, pocket these little, just tiny little uh, spectacles. Bi like spectacles that hook right over my ears. And you go, well, let's see what we got here. All right, let's see what I can do. Uh, and I, I, Roll uh, an investigation. Oh, nice. At disadvantage. No, um, normally. Oh. This isn't a tech you're super familiar with, so I would Not normally give you disadvantage on it. You haven't finished reading the book. <laughs> Twist you it. can barely I'll read. Twist it, I'll twist um, it. So I would normally I've had the give book you for 40 sessions. <laughs> have you taken the time to read it? Nah. Um, so I normally give you disadvantage, but because you're using your spectacles and you are working through the book, I'm just gonna give you let you roll on it straight. And what is it? Just investigation? Yeah. Uh, I'll step up. Ah, the old goblin try. I'll take a look too. <laughs> now that you mention it. Yeah, step uh, up here. Roll with you, the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Having Gricko look at it with you does not uh, increase not your chance anyway. to figure well, it out. Well, good try. Tor 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 good try, little green. <laughs> Do you suspect that your blood has been replaced entirely with witch light? <laughs> okay. All you needed was a ten. So. Oh. Uh, you look you look at this, and though you're not familiar with this tech or how it works... And, I understand perfectly uh, how this works, all right? <laughs> we can figure this out. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you check the seals. You check the spots that it is, um, that these vials are connecting with Torbeck's skin. Um, 
and you check to see that there is uh, that there is no sign of rusting, that there is no sound of leaking, mm-hmm. that there is no um, there are no remnants of witch light on the outside of these vials in any way. And then, with your spectacles, you get in even closer to see if you see any grains of sand inside of the vials, and you see that they are perfectly sand free. Uh, well, uh, you're looking good. Like. Uh, Oh, One last little treatment just to make sure nothing gets in. <laughs> now, what, are you, what are you doing, Gideon? Try not to enjoy this, all right? We're just lubricating the end point so that, uh, you know, no, hey, come on, come on. This is just so no sand gets in, all right? <laughs> yeah, Big well, red. Yeah. I think I've found the problem. <laughs> little green, there, there ain't no problem here, man. No, there's a bunch of fucking tubes all over the place. <laughs> There's a problem. Look at all these tubes in you, Tobit. I figured it out. No, no. In the engineering world, we say that that ain't a bug; it's a feature. All right, it's just how it fucking works. Well, thanks, Gideon. Yeah. Torbeck has peace of mind for that. <laughs> You're looking good. You're not gonna die to this thing exploding in the desert. I mean, probably the desert itself, but <laughs> not this thing exploding. Almost certainly, you'll die of thirst. Uh, <laughs> way, way longer. Way, I mean, sooner. Before anything like this. I mean, this has dropped down to at least 37%. That's comforting. <laughs> oh, and they say that uh, dying of, uh, of dehydration in the desert is like only the third worst way to die. <laughs> what are the others? Um, uh, being torn apart by a bear is number two. <laughs> and number one is, uh, is, is drowning. Oh. oh, and it's being burned alive, so it's fourth word. That doesn't sound too Acton bad. Acton Longscarf did two of those four <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm an empath. <laughs> So I am uniquely qualified to tell you that he died in terrible anger. Oh, it took my empath nature to tell that he died in terrible, terrible anger. Oh, you, Gregor. It was double pain. You could have deciphered that. Oh, oh, man, I can't believe you can end pass someone while you're a giant toad, man. Oh, That's freaking yeah. awesome. Drowning in the water, half it, dead. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he was like slumped over the side of that boat. <laughs> yeah. This guy was grinding him up like he's a blender, you know? Oh, like oh, a fading uh, ninja I blender. especially know because I'm a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull one of the Schmation jars out, Mm -hmm. and I will Uh. look inside them both to make sure that uh, uh, our mushroom friends are still alive. They are. They are. Uh, Can you understand me? Can you speak? They seem very, um, they seem like they are recovering from the severe dehydration that they underwent. I'm going to keep you wet and in the shade. Perfect. Uh, can you uh, uh, say something? Can I understand? Do I recall? They hum at you. They hum But at they, me. you know that they don't speak. They don't have communications. They sing songs and dance in response. They don't seem like they have the energy to dance. Um, but you can see their eyes fluttering a little bit and they hum at you. Uh, um, I, I will endeavor to sing a song if you would answer some questions. Do you know where we uh, have been spit out? Do you know the connection of the circle you were dancing in and, and this place? Uh, is there any information that you can convey? Uh, they hum in minor. Hmm. They switch. We go. Ah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, Hootsie. Okay. Ah. There you go. Ah. 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 What the hell is so scary about that thing, man? Oh my god! You haven't seen it, kid. Oh, where's your lily pad, Frosty? Like an evil eye. I have it here. Oh, okay. Watching, here. watching every move. I'm unfold it and try to like form it you, into like the tip of a giant sun hat. You unfold it, and as you try to form it into a hat, it begins to crack <laughs> as it dries out in the heat of the sun. Yeah. Put it back. 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 I will. Um, I'll take out what water skin I have, and I'll just give it a little bit of a drink, and then very carefully, I'll cinch it up. <sighs> It'll, it'll okay. stay here. Hoochie! Oh, you gotta put on your sunscreen! I'm a. <laughs> I know that it's covered in feathers. 
Oh. With this cooking oil. Okay. <laughs> and there's the rest of our water. Drink up. Drink up, Hootsie. Whoa! Stay hydrated. Oh. Uh, do, do I see anything else on the horizon Keep besides the, the creepy flashing no. specks? It's and just, the obelisks. Or the obelisks. The obelisks are off towards the north in front of you. It's not a direction that you have noticed the, um, the lights. That's <laughs> Well, I don't see a flash into the north where the obelisks are. Maybe we want to get away from it and head that way. Or maybe we try your splitting up idea. I mean, I hate to say, but that's not the worst idea I ever heard. Unless we're being hunted by some crazy eldritch eye well, I that's mean, popping out all over the place. Uh, what if it's just waiting to pick us off? Yeah, ah. Gideon's right! Uh, as long as we maintain our faculties, I'm not too worried. Uh, that would be a true terror, but uh, until we start to truly like lose time, uh, everything seems to be complete, uh, seamless. I remember being in the forest in the Mushroom Circle. I remember arriving here. I remember the, our, our conversation, with the exception of Kremi, who's under the influence of whatever is happening to Kremi. Yeah, it's drugs. We're okay. Yeah, it's just I, drugs. Yeah, it's I just would drugs. propose that we make our way to the obelisks, and if we can get back here midday next tomorrow, then we may have a shot at returning through the same ritual that we did before. We just need to find a little bit of shade and some shelter. Probably some shade under the obelisks. Man, are they, are they, do they go up and have like stones that connect over top? Or they just nope. go straight they up. Just, in the they're sky? two obelisks that just go straight up. Everyone take their blankets. Make sure your head is wrapped. I'll use all my blankets on Hootsie. Yes, I saw them. I have a second blanket here for you. Oh, thank you. I can add it to the rim of the hat. You need <laughs> extra nice and floppy. No, no. Okay. Uh, okay, here your giant, comically large sunglasses. Okay. Oh. Your son is so bad for children. <laughs> I'll take my jacket off and I'll like hang it over my head. Is this gonna be good enough? <laughs> you have a hat. Yeah, dude, does it, no, he doesn't have a hat anymore. No, you, oh, you, you got, 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 got it back. You got it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm frosted to like wear some sort of like thing on my head, right? Yeah, you can put it under the hat. I guess I, I guess I could. <laughs> Would I get any kind of sense that I'm, I'm, I don't feel as bad? I'm like, no, you, uh, you feel just as bad as everyone else. Uh, I was gonna offer you my blanket, but in <laughs> retrospect, fuck that. It's hot out here. You're you're used to flame and oh. furnace. This is just after Don't midday in the heat of the desert. This is a dry heat. Uh. This and this, it's <clears throat> you've been to. Actually, I will have you roll a perception check. <gasps> At advantage, because you are a fire genasi. He's 40% fire. I'm at least. Oh! Oh. Big money. Natural 20. Oh! Oh, Probably for the You have been to Neckbet before. In Uh. in your travels, all of you have been to Neckbet before. um, When you were originally looking for eventually what you found, but when you were traveling as the carnival, you went all over the place scamming people. That's and oh, Neckbet is a place of old money, ancient money, gold and treasure. And you knew that it was an opportunity to make a lot of coin. Though that didn't happen for you while you were yeah. there. Oh, um, you have been there. You felt the heat of Neckbet in the summer. And this heat is significantly hotter. This heat is different. Wait a second, I remember this place. This is Neck Bats. And, neck and it's way the hell hotter than it was last time. And I didn't like it the first time. Neck bet. That's what I said, Neck Bats. <clears throat> no, Neck Bet. No, yeah, Neck Bats, yeah. Uh, the, um, close, kid. the desert. What do you mean it's not even close? It's right there. It's right next to it. In fact, it's so fucking close, it's negative eight inches away from what he's saying. It's so fucking close. <laughs> all, all right. Yeah. I think your deduction is likely. What was my deduction? Oh, they were in neck bats. 
<laughs> well, and it's way fucking hotter now, too. Does anybody get that? We're all here. Everybody remembers it. Well, it's the middle of the day in the desert. And neck bat. Uh, damn it. Uh, neck. <laughs> neck bat. Neck, neck bat. Don't correct yourself. You gotta ride the first time. Uh, right. I can't even remember what this place is called anymore. It's neck bats, all right? We gotta stop <laughs> arguing about the name. It's tearing us apart. <laughs> I like where he goes out. Let's head to the obelisk. We can get some shade, at least, in the afternoon and sit under the shade of, the, of one of the obelisks and figure shit out. There may be other things to see when we get there. And, as I said, we may need to return here in 24 hours. Does it look like I can get there in 24 hours and then get back? Uh, it's hard to tell in a oh. desert like this where you're not on dunes, um, though you can tell that off in the distance there are um, the clear slopes of dunes in this place. Right now, you, it feels almost like it's plateaued. Um, and as you look out around you, it looks like you could get to the, the obelisk in 15 minutes or 15 hours. It's oh. hard to tell. Oh. We're just gonna have to try it. Grammy, if that light that you've been seeing uh, gets closer or starts to uh, uh, create a pattern emerge, you let me know. All right, I'll let you know. Everyone follow me. Follow Frost. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, uh, Mr. King of Hearts, uh, over. <laughs> Uh, this is Gricko. Uh, Gricko Grim Grim. Uh, if you can hear this, I'm willing to, you know, let bygones be bygones. I know we got off to the wrong foot. If you could help us, you know, I'll feel like I will, I would appreciate it. Over. New sending stone, who did? Yeah. <laughs> have we, have, has he ever... He's not responded. To He's anything. never communicated with us before through. No, but one. you yeah. also <clears throat> haven't attempted to communicate with him through it either. It's worth a shot. Um, and you, you say this, and you all listen. The sound of swirling sands is um, swirling around you, but there is no response from the other end. I'm sorry for saying that you look like the kind of guy who would play guitar. No, it's fine. Thank you band. so much. Oh, you know, God. you know, I really uh, appreciate all the help. If you can hear this, uh, you probably can't, but uh, we'll be just fine. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm telling you, Torbeck is also here. Uh, Torbeck is also here. Thank you. Oh yeah, good idea, Torbeck. Uh, Crummy is also here. So is Gideon. So is Frost. So is Uzi, so is uh, Twig. Well, she's a bit of a marionette at the moment. And then we have two new Kem uh, Campari friends. Com companions. Uh, over. <laughs> what? Oh, companions. <laughs> Campari. Over. <laughs> is that everybody? It's their campestries. You walk through the sand. This is a disaster. We're gonna die. You yeah, walk, gonna... and you you are all just just walking with just the things over your head. Yeah. We're also doing the uh, special hour... walk that makes sure that we don't attract any sand dunes <laughs> or worms, I should say. That's not a thing. So you walk for an hour. Oh, you're talking about from dunes. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. what are you We're talking the, about? The sandworm yeah. dance. We don't want to attract the shy halu. Yeah. 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 No, I get you. I th I thought he was talking about something else. What do you know? <laughs> It's not in this campaign. Yeah, no, I get, I, I get it. It's all right. It, it's all right. It's, it's all right. Okay. It's good. I'm not on my game. You, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you did fuck up royally before uh, the session two started. Two or three times. Yeah, it's pretty At bad. Least. It was just, it was horrible, and I don't really think I'll ever forgive me. you. But you walk for about an hour. The sweat is coating your bodies. Your lips are dry and chapped. Your mouths have no saliva left in them as you look out at the horizon and the obelisks look just as far away as they had when you had started. But all around you is the shimmering, um, the shimmering dance of mirages of water. And though you know in your heart of hearts that those pools of water aren't real, you're so thirsty that you want them to be. You yearn for them to be, and I need you all to roll a constitution saving throw. Uh-oh. <clears throat> saving throw. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's pretty good. Oh, boy. I got an 11. I got a 19. 19? 11. Oof. 
Could I be endeavoring to strengthen my mind using a cantrip called resistance, which lets me add a d4, or should I? I hate you, so no. Okay. No, of course you can. Of (laughs) course you can. (laughs) Of course. Oh, this is. Oh, um, that's fine. I'll just take it. That's acceptable money. No, it's not. Um, (laughs) Don't fucking say that. It's not acceptable at all. Oh, now I roll a twenty. Fuck. Uh, ten. Oh, that was die. Uh, who got below a thirteen? Three guys on the side of the table. You each suffer from one level of exhaustion. <laughs> oh! That's bad. <gasps> that is. How do you manage that? Do you go to conditions? No, just to disadvantage oh. on ability checks. That's it. Okay. You. It only gets bad. No, no, you don't. You don't go to conditions. You yeah, feel. It's in conditions at the bottom. You feel the, the heat bottom. soaking into your very bones. The sand is heavy on your legs. Your muscles are aching with the energy that it's taking to propel you forward through this. Your skin is sand burned from the gusts of sandy winds that have rushed past you over and over and over again throughout the hours. The tiny shards of glass that make up the sand causing razor-like marks on your skin. Your skin is red. From the, from the heating of the sun, and you feel tired. And oh. still, crummy, you see this occasional burst of light yeah. off against the horizon. I'm not shouting as loudly, but I still get startled every time. <laughs> oh no. And you continue. <laughs> oh, I'm spooked. Oh, jeez. Oh, 15 cool. minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. And you are still further away from the obelisk that you would like than you would like to be but you do see that they're a little bit taller a little bit larger and a little bit closer and i need you all to roll a constitution saving throw oh my god oh thank god and at exhaustion on. level 1 is that at disadvantage come on no 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 it's, no, it's no, no, no. yeah it's just ability chance. thank you <sighs> let's go got a twist that's going to be a 17 for young Tom. i'm going to twist i'm going to i'm going to one twist 22 for Thank you. I'll, I'll do it I would like one, please. There we go. Is that all right if I have one? Yeah, 21. I would 21. Not, I'm not shepherding this one. I'm, I'm already up. I'm already <laughs> yeah, way up. Yeah, up and up. 15. 21. 21. Did anyone get below a 15? Wow. Oh, let's go. I'm good, baby. We're good. No? no. Okay. You, <laughs> you have steeled yourself point. against this heat for, for a bit. After, during the past hour, you have taken some time to utilize a little bit of the water that you had left to cool your your aching skin. You have begun to notice the patterns of the wind as it picks up and the sands begin to swirl, and you have taken out your bedrolls and created a sort of um, barricade against the swirling sand to keep yourself safe during these moments. Uh, When when it gets too tough to walk, you are leaning on each other and helping each other. And as a unit, you are moving through the sands. And you continue to walk. 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. And you are, you can see now that based on how far you've traveled, those obelisks lead to something. Directly behind them is a large <coughs> limestone temple. There is a winding, snaking stone pathway that leads out from it and is a 20 minute walk before you reach it. You are so close, but so tired, so hot, so thirsty. I need you all to roll a constitution saving throw. Torbeck ready! Come on, baby! Let's go. I just need a good roll here. 20. I would like to 22. use a twist. Use a twist? Thank Just you, one. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. I got 12. 13. It's not enough. 23. 22. Whoa. 20. So the two of you got below 17? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 17. Damn. The two of you take another level of exhaustion. Our speed is now halved. Well, actually, no, well, you I, have, yeah. I, my speed is halved. Oh. <sighs> Technically, your speed has already been halved. Oh, so your speed is poor. You're crawling. So it's poor. You are, yeah. you are struggling. 
I'll move over to Torbeck. I got you, buddy. Come on up here. Ah, Torbeck's shoes are full of land. Yours, yours are the same. My shoes are full no, of land. No, you're level one He's exhaustion. One. Oh, yeah, you're level only failed one once. exhaustion. Gotcha, I'm gotcha, gotcha. Failed twice. Yeah. Ah, it's just Torbeck. <laughs> you know, Uncle Globo lied to me. Is there anyone who hasn't failed at all? I would like you to roll perception check at advantage. Come on, buddy. It's just a little while. It's just a little further, man. We'll get there. The gizmos are heavy in my bones. I'm twisting this. Oh. Every time he said, I said it was hot, he'd say, Oh, Greco, you know it's not the heat, it's the humidity. <laughs> it's true. It's and true. so every time it gets you. I thought of a desert, I thought it wouldn't be so bad. This is worse than this hot swamp. Fifteen. Okay. You have traveled three hours to get to this place. Ooh. Three hours beneath the hot sun. Three hours without water. Three hours being pelted by sandstorms. You're all distracted, uncomfortable, sunburned, dehydrated. And yet, Kremi, you are on high alert. Oh yeah, I am. Whether it's the constant lights that you see off on the horizon, the true sight that you'd been gifted by the campestries back in thither, or curse with. Whether it's something else innate or core to you you feel like you see more than you expect to. And as you look ahead of you, you see that the two obelisks rise straight up towards the air, or towards the sky. Directly between them, a path snakes towards a temple, but also towards you. And the sand snakes too, about maybe a five minute walk from where you are. The sand is moving unnaturally. And you look behind you, to the left, to the right. The sand seems to be fine. You see a, a sandstorm begin to pick up off towards, off towards the west. And you note the way that the sand moves during that natural phenomenon. And it's not the same. It is an undulation just beneath the surface of the sand. Almost as if there's something there at the start of the pathway guarding it. Protecting it, f f f f f fellas. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing something again. Okay. The sand. It's it's moving. It's mo It's moving unnaturally. Is it the, the twin? Is it the light that we're headed towards? No, it's it's nothing related to the light at all. It's it's, <coughs> it's undulating, like there's some sort of lurking beast swimming just under the surface. I'll peer closer towards the direction we're heading and see if I also see undulating sand. I roll a perception check, normally. How far, <sighs> while he's doing that, how far are we from, like, do we have an estimation? So you were about 30 minutes from the obelisk, yep. about 20 minutes from the start of the stone path that snakes towards the temple, and about, um, and it's about, <clears throat> I said five minutes, but what I really meant is about 15 feet okay. in front of that, that Kremi sees the. Mm. Once she's resolved, I'd like to try something, but I'll let. 15. Um, with Kremi's um, direction of where to look and what to look for, um, you squint your eyes and shield them from the rays of the sun, and it takes a moment for you to stop seeing the image of the shifting mirage and finally able to detect the, the undulating movement of the sand. Kremi, that, that is real. You see it too? I do. See, I'm not crazy. I fucking told y'all. What do you think that is? Something under the sand? The sand could be alive itself? Could be anything. Oh, oh, all right, if we, if we think there's some sort of a threat, Gideon, stable Torbeck. Uh, and I would like to attempt to consume uh, one of my uh, mutagens um, as one of my, my uh, class features, and mm -hmm. I will use rapidity which would increase my speed by 10 feet, so it would get me almost back to half speed instead of quarter speed. Um, 
but I would have disadvantage on intelligence checks. Okay. Um, I would. I'm attempting to essentially channel this 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 alchemic witch light and see if I can uh, use it to bolster my body to uh, regain back up to half speed. You, I will say you're easily <laughs> able to do this. You watch as the witch light in Torbeck's vials begins to bubble and pop as uh, his body begins to, um, to change. And you notice that his legs elongate just a little bit uh, um, oh. more than they had been before. He's quite a bit taller. Um, and you see a look of confusion flash across his face for a moment. The, e- the effort that your body is um, going through to make it change physically is causing you um, bits of confusion. You, you feel a little bit dizzy, you feel disoriented, but you still feel oh. yourself. <coughs> oh. Oh. Thanks, Gideon. I might still, uh, Tormac will still use your, your shoulder a bit. Yeah, it's all uh, good. Uh, but I'm able to, it seems like I'm able to keep up with you a little bit better. Cool. I mean, oh, does that hurt, Tobek? <laughs> does this hurt the Tobek? <laughs> it's, un- it's uncomfortable, but it doesn't hurt. Yes. Yeah, uh, not painful, but it's not great. Uh, did, did you mean to do that? Uh, yes. You meant to extend out your bones and your legs? Well, oh. no, but Tormek feels like Tormek Dor- can harness it a little bit. No, no, that's good, that's good, uh, good. Well done, Tormek. Keep keep working on that. Uh, oh, yeah, no, uh, that's, uh, that's, I hate to say it, but that's good. No, uh, well done. Uh, All right, I thought we've, we've come too far. I think we just gotta keep going. We need to find shelter, and that's the only fucking way. There's some kind of temple. There should be plenty of shelter in there. If we stay in this heat any longer, we'll be in a lot of danger. This may not be a threat. Try to maintain some form of optimism here. Well... Oh, that's, that's a good way to think about it. Uh, Maybe it's some sort of friendly, you know... I've heard that there's like sand whales that are very friendly and will help you. Well. Maybe it will grant us a boon <coughs> if we help it. Let's approach. Friendly space whale. It's your best mate. Normal pace. <laughs> Ain't no other way but one foot in front of the other. So how are you approaching? Just normally? In single file, right? Like we've been. To I would say single to file. Hide numbers. Uh, and um, <laughs> we're we're continuing to <laughs> to the obelisk. So uh, we're not going around to lay ourselves and and suffer the heat. Yeah. Okay. You you rally each other. Um, you bolster your energies, and together as a unit, as you do everything, you decide to tackle this next obstacle in your path, and you move forward relentlessly in the heat of the sun. Fifteen minutes passes, and you can see that this, as you get closer to it, is not a small bit of sand that's undulating and moving like you'd originally thought. This is a huge patch of sand, and you are not quite familiar with things like quicksand, but you imagine that this is maybe what it would look like, though you see no moisture. The way that it moves almost looks like water as it rolls and undulates and tumbles. You get closer. You're about 15 feet from it now. Do you continue? It just continues to, like... Yes, royal. royal. That's a great word. <clears throat> Does it, it look like it could be walked around with the reason, yeah. within reason? Like, I mean, it, you it you imagine out? you could. It it is uh, ovular, so you imagine that you could stay fifteen feet and try to get around it. That it's going to take a while. This is a large. That the quickest way would be through, but that you could attempt to. Yeah. What's its like like radius looking like? One hundred and twenty feet. Big fucking pile of Or sand. diameter, sorry, would be 120 feet, uh, not yeah, radius. Is, now that we're here, I don't know if we should walk through it. It doesn't seem to be responding to it. I think that it may just be a natural phenomenon. I'm not much for deserts. Oh, like <coughs> the sand's just shifting naturally? Like the earth was doing that? Or the wind? It doesn't seem to be sinking. <laughs> but it's possible that we would be pulled in by that violent action. 
I don't want to risk that. A well, little green. I mean, you're connected to all sorts of fucking monstrosities. You getting any kind of like, you Ooh. know, vibe or like rumbling in the force? If it is a monstrosity or a monster of some kind, know that I am friends with all monsters. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you ampli- amplifying your voice to do this? Are you like yeah, speaking yeah, louder than I will than say, I will say uh, Grico Grimgrin is friend to all monsters. We mm-hmm. wish you no harm and we wish to help and become uh, united spiritually. <laughs> With you, great sand monster. <laughs> the sand begins to, to turn and roil more uh, more violently. It begins to expand <laughs> larger and larger and larger. And in the very center, you begin to see almost like a sand whirlwind as a huge hole begins to open up. And then out of it, what looks to be a gigantic cobra. But no, not one cobra, but two and then three, and as you see its body propel itself forward out of this uh, gigantic den or burrow, you realize that it is a single cobra, but with three heads. I need you all to roll for initiative. Oh! Oh! We made a mistake. <laughs> oh yes, thank goodness it is a monster and not a beast. How do we still not have that? Uh, is initiative an ability Ooh! check? It is. It is. Oh, fuck. Oh. All right, who's who's who here? Okay. Um, initiative, so, I need 20 to 25. 24. Jesus. Uh, 15 to 20. 17. <clears throat> we have Grico. 10 to Krammy, 15. Frost. Gideon. Torque. 10 yeah. to 15? Okay. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, 15. Um, and then Torbeck and Grico, what did you each get? Nine, eight. Dude, wow. what's, your, what's your initiative? Look at that. Put them in there, just nice. basically perfectly. Um, you you look out as this creature um, emerges from what was clearly a subterranean uh, snake's den, and it rears all three of its cobra heads back and hisses loudly at you, but you notice the sand is still burbling, the sand is still roiling, there is still something beneath the sand itself as this thing rears up towards all of you. Frost, it is your turn. I will uh, immediately, um, I'll step forward. Creature, we mean you no harm, we only mean to pass. We know how to defend ourselves. Please, relax yourself. This does not have to end in combat, but I will defend myself if I have to, and I will put my hands together and you'll see energy. I would like to hold my action, and if the three-headed cobra snake endeavors to move forward in a threatening manner or attack one of us, then I will unleash the spell Chromatic Orb. Ooh, that's a doozy. Good spell. Get in. Well, it's time to heat things up. Uh, and I, I activate my flame form. The gauges ward of life. They spin forward, not kicking into a gear, uh, but they start to tremble as the, the light on the gauge uh, ignites with a fiery glow. Um, and... Uh, Gideon, what are you doing? <clears throat> hey, you stupid hodge... You stupid snake sand thing. We gotta get right past you, all right? Move on out of the way, or you're gonna get moved. And I attack it. Ah! <laughs> oh, it, no! It's a oh, friendly wait, monster! Oh. Do I, Too late, he already did it. I did do it. it. I, He's did attacking. I get any sense that it was get, 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 uh, Natural Oh! <laughs> About yeah, you you leg bit. it through the sand <laughs> directly. <laughs> you, you are standing at the two of the heads. You are standing on the edge of the shifting sands. Not a foot forward, or you know that you would tumble down into this um, into this undulating mass of sand. But you are right on the edge where your where your footing is firm as you reach up towards the heads of these snakes and yeah. you let loose a flurry of blows. You're goddamn right, I do. 
It's like the knife fight in Yu Yu Hakusho from the Dark Tournament. <laughs> okay. I don't know what any of that means. Oh! Let's fucking go! Two. Uh, uh, uh! Oh god. I unleash the fury of a thousand Genasi. Uh, a thousand and one Genasi. I'm assuming that's a second that was a natural 20. That was a second yeah, natural yeah. 20. I'm just okay. gonna put it out there, you know what I mean? I don't even know what dice I roll anymore. I'm gonna dread both of them. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do that. I mean, that would ruin your life forever. He's gonna one shot this fucking snake and just <laughs> boo boo, and one of the heads is gonna be just caved in. The roiling underneath is actually a gin. Thank you, you freed me from my doom. <laughs> yeah, right? That's incredible. That snake right. ate me. Oh, what's up, Michael? Oh, that's that's fair. That's, oh, fair. that's, that's hurtful a little bit, but oh, that's brutal. Oh, that's awful. Nine. Oh shit. Thirteen. Twenty-three points of damage. Plus. That's First one, right? No, that was. Isn't it? You should roll at least four dice. That was four dice. Yeah. That was forty. Was yeah. 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 There's yeah. one forty. Okay. Well, two or one. <clears throat> You so I don't let me just make sure I don't plus anything. Take extra add, add strength, add your strength modifier. Well, it's a, so what do you mean? 10. Yeah, plus five. Yes. Yeah, so I did. Yeah. Okay, the, yeah, yeah. the four dice Three in 20. total was like 13. Okay, yeah, 23. Yeah, so 23. Damn. And it would also take six six damage, wow. six flame damage. You, you, you rolled 13 on 48. So it's gonna take twenty-four. So it's gonna take six more flame so damage. It takes twenty-four damage. No, so it's gonna take one, one more damage. It takes one more damage. Yeah, have you used your bonus action? Much, but well, I flame form is a bonus okay. action. Okay, yeah. sure. You rush she forward. Be babysat over here. Yeah. You rush forward through the sand and you um, you <sighs> unleash. The beast within, and you slam into this thing, um, <clears throat> punching directly beneath its jaw. And you watch as the first head snaps back as you um, as you go in with the next hit to the second head, which also snaps back. All of the heads turn, and you are directly in front of them, and the only one in front of them. So all of the heads are going to um, lash down on oh. you, and all three <laughs> of them are going to make a make bite attacks. Nice try. Uh, the first one is going to miss. Oh. The second one is going to hit. Oh. Um, and 16. 16 would miss. Okay, so two of them will miss. Oh. Ooh. Um, I need nice. you to make a constitution saving throw. Are these normal nice. attacks, or are these some kind of weird ability attacks? Uh, they are bite attacks. They're normal bite attacks. I'd like to activate a gauge. Gotcha. I'd like to activate uh, heat gauge one. Okay. Uh, and as w which head's coming at me that I think is gonna hit the, the middle head. Uh, as it's it's coming. The one down, you didn't punch. Uh, mm -hmm. I lost my train whistle, but uh, you'll see it. You'll see if you can. You'll see. It's here. It's right over behind you somewhere. Right? Yeah, oh. it's it's behind the pig. I was just I just saw it in session. <gasps> That feels good. I got it. <laughs> I thought I lost it for like weeks. I looked for it. Um, you see, as the gauge kicks into heat gauge one, the chains rattle and they whir to life as they swing up and they leash around the neck of uh, the hydra. And I redirect its bite attack onto one of its other heads. <gasps> nice. I'm going to uh, cast go chromatic orb. Listen, when I go gear five, I'm gonna start bouncing. The whole desert shakes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, gear five's like level twenty. <laughs> so oh, that one, okay. Um, yeah, you are you are able to do that. Um, I will next time consider uh, dreading your natural. I 20s. will uh, cast um, chromatic orb as soon as I see mm -hmm. it. Yeah, of course. Uh, let me just make sure that ain't some. That's going to be a twenty-three shit. to hit. Nice. That hits. Okay, I'm going to do. Oh, oh yeah, we'll do it after the chromatic action orb. That nobody uses. It's well, pretty rare. We've used it a handful of times. I, yeah. I love holding actions, and yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm going to do three d eight cold damage. Ooh. That's oh. gonna be nice. Yeah, pretty good. Nice. Uh, Seventeen points of cold damage. <laughs> As I un uh, I turned this into um, what was swirling between my hands into literally a uh, perfect uh, like uh, one of those spheres of ice that you would put in a whiskey mm. glass, Ooh, but the size of like nice. a softball, and I just hurl it with my mind and it 
slashes into one of the heads or wherever. Uh, you do this doing a significant amount of damage. Um, all of the heads uh, rear back and hiss out at you as they are writhing and um, and moving in a very predatory manner. Um, their attention still seems to be focused on Gideon, him being the closest in proximity. Um, you watch as the middle head rears back and begins to make this strange um, hissing, trilling sound in the back of its throat. You can see this spot on its neck where there's um, where it's vibrating, um, and you begin to hear buzzing, not buzzing, Ugh. clicking, like the sound of clicking mandibles. As you see, six swarms of scarabs uh. spill up out of the undulating sand oh. and begin to um, move around all of you. Um, they're going to, uh, they have the movement speed to have at least one on each of you, there'll be two on Gideon. Actually, there'll be two on Frost because of the chromatic orb, I think. That stands to reason. Based on sound and who's making the most noise. Um, They are all going to make their attacks, so there'll be two attacks on Frost. No, thank you. That's not very nice. I'm fine. I'm assuming 11 doesn't hit. It does not. Um, But I'm assuming 17 does. Oh, where's Hootsie? It does. Um, Gricko, that's going to hit. Where's can you grab the Hootsie, man? Um, <coughs> does an 18 <coughs> hit on you, Torbeck? It does. Do you need a mini? Is it over here? Yeah, it's just the middle. Does a 16 hit on you? On uh, me? Uh, actually, no, it does not. Okay. And then a, um, a 21 is going to hit on you, Gideon. Um, oh, 21. Yeah. So there will be one hit on each of you except for uh, Kremi. Frost, you are going to take three points um, of damage, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Yeah. Gricko, two points of damage and a constitution saving throw. Torbeck, one point of damage and a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, That will be a 11. Just keep it to yourself for a second. Um, Four points of damage for you, Gideon, and a constitution saving throw. And then um, I need you to let me know if you have rolled, um, if you have rolled 14 or below. I'm above. Above. Even with disadvantage, I roll well. (laughs) Okay, the two of you, um, you take this, you take bites from all of these swarming Mm. scarabs. They're all around you. Poison begins to seep into, into your flesh and you, you hear the buzzing louder and louder and louder, but it's not a buzzing, it's the chittering of their mandibles, these hungry, scarab mandibles as they crawl all over you, as they fly all around you. <laughs> you have disadvantage on all attack rolls. Oh. <coughs> uh, spell and, and... Spell and, okay. um, and physical attacks. And that is the Tri-Cobra's turn. Krabby. Oh god. Um, do I feel like I can, <laughs> I guess from a meta perspective, how many hit points do I think these scarabs have? From a meta perspective, they appear to be minions, but I run swarms differently. Right, um, because I'm disadvantaged while they, so I mean, we were doing it wrong for a long time, right? If I'm ranged, because they're on melee, I'm disadvantaged yes. on all ranged Correct. attacks, doesn't matter who I'm attacking. Correct, Correct. Okay. We, we, made that mistake for years. Whoa, no way. I, no. I, I will not rule that. it that way. Yeah. I, I will was... rule it that you are disadvantaged on whatever's in your melee range. If you want to attack something that's at range, you won't be at disadvantage. Okay. I guess because it's like it's like fly, it's like like getting it's all in up in your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. there's have blown my mind. If there's, it makes sense, but yeah. I never thought about it. If it's yeah. like yeah. trying to shoot basketball. I, I, will, right I will consider years. changing it for the next, but I, nah. I mean, that's how we've always played it, so I'm fine with keeping it the same way. I would be worth that night's man. Uh, I'll be you learn something new every day. seeing the flashes. I'm so <laughs> fucking over this! And you will see oh, all the obelisks. Are we like near obelisks? You are about a, you're about a 10 minute walk from the obelisks. Hmm. Um, you will sort of see our long shadows <gasps> and all of the darkness that we're making on the on the bright sun. There's not a whole lot of shadow because the sun is still high in the sky, but you see little bits of it start to sort of slither towards me. Um, just for a split second, as they sort of it kind of crawls up my feet 
and covers me in, in shadow as I turn almost into a silhouette and then you'll hear ominous jazz start to play very faintly as neon lights start to sort of highlight with glyphs Beautiful. appearing uh, on my skin and clothes. Um, and uh, I will whirl my cane around and I'll say, uh, from the Baron, and I will uh, shoot two Eldritch Blasts at the uh, beastie. I love that. At the big snake? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I don't know what the AC is going to be, but... Son of a gun. Uh, that will be a... The lowest is a... 14? 14 misses. Okay, and then 21. That hits. So, I will do uh, 1d10. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 points of force damage. Okay. Uh, and then, God, I have, I've barely used this feature. i got to make sure I'm doing this right. Um, and then... I gained 10 HP, that's fine. It needs to make a wisdom saving throw, or else it's frightened of me until the end of my next turn. Nice. Oh. Natural 20. Oh. Okay. Good that try. Passes. Good try. Uh, <laughs> yeah, passes. So that's it. I shoot it once. Uh, oh, fuck! Ah! And I'll start like swat, swatting at the scare. The eldritch magic sears into its skin, and you see, um, you see a bit of neon flash against its scales for a second before... Um, it turns to um, before it turns to smoke in in the heat, and the snake lets out a loud hiss at you, and all of the scarabs begin to buzz and vibrate and clack their mandibles together, um, as if incensed at its anger. Ooh. Grico. Um. So, do I know what this is? I don't know if it's a monstrosity or is it something that I would know. Um, you could roll a survival or nature, I guess, to see what you know about it. Uh, skills. 17. Um. Oh. 17. Oh. Well done. Uh, let me see. I mean, see, what I'm trying to ask, like, is this something that I would need to fight, or do I feel like there's some other way to, like, not kill all these guys? Yeah. So, are, do you want to know what kind of creature it is, or you want to know whether you I, should fight it or not? But, I mean, basically, I'm trying to think, is this something where I'd be like, oh, it's a misunderstanding? I would say it's very clear it's a mis monstrosity. Yeah. Oh. Um, Ooh. And it does not seem... Oh, wait, what, did, what was the role that you got? A uh, 17. With a 17, looking at this thing, uh, I would say you even uh, take a peek down into its lair. You can see, now that the sands have parted as it's slithered out, that um, the entire floor of it is littered with, with bones. Um, where it's positioned is clearly beneath the pathway that leads into this temple. I would say it's very easy to tell that this is some sort of guardian and that it is not willing to let you pass. Wow. Sorry, buddy. All right. I am sorry, <laughs> great temple guardian, but you need to die. This is the circle of life with a little bit of yeah, and I'm going to go. <laughs> uh, with a little bit of yeah, I'm a, uh, once again, my uh, great frog emeth will appear, uh, my spirit above me, and lash out with his tongue. That's 30 feet, right? Or do I need to get a little closer? Yeah. You can move five feet, you're uh, totally good. You're probably okay, though. You, you, you can you're still not you going to take an attack of opportunity. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll, move, I'll move there. I'll move yeah. there. And uh, I am going to do my attack roll. Uh, that'll be a 16 plus a lot. Uh, so that 24, hits. probably. Uh, and then a story from Archer. And that's, so that is 1D, and that's bonus action. That is nine points of radiant damage. Nice. And then I, with that, it'll be a megaton uh, uh, tongue lash. Or actually, no, it'll lash out with its tentacles, too. So it, in the, a double attack, as I cast Guiding Bolt on it at a third level. Right? Do I get third level spells? Yeah, apparently. Uh, guiding Bolt. And so... Can I twist that? You may. Yeah. One yeah. twist. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit in your fate. Hold on, hold on. 17. 
Oh, oh I, that I'm, hits. I'm just kidding. I'm, I lied. <laughs> it, it, it is fate. It is fate. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, I think hits. it does. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, it's AC is 16. <gasps> oh. Uh, 16. Sorry. Well, I was so close with the 15. I didn't read. <laughs> I didn't think about Dean. False bananas. Who sold the show? Now, what are you, Spider Man? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Have we made that a short yet? I guess there's too much context needed. It's sort of a slow burn. Uh, that that was a five. That was a five. We all saw it. Uh, that is 11, 15, uh, 18, 19, 21 Dude. points of radiant damage. As, this, as a the tongue How many points? And 21, you said? 21. As a tongue and the tentacles of the frog Venus spear lash forward to hit it, now it's kind of gl- uh, glowing with the swirling uh, blue uh, spirit energy. Uh, and the next attack on it is advantaged. Mm. Uh, it does a significant amount of damage uh, as it rears back and hisses. Um, you see the inside of its um, throat begin to constrict, almost as if it's preparing to spit. <gasps> nice. <laughs> yeah, with that, I'm going to get closer. Uh, uh, my question, though, Tarmac before I move, if I move 15 feet, Rich, can you confirm, if I move here with 15 feet, do I have 10 feet of reach? It's like seven and a half normally. Is what yes, as long as half of the square, yeah. roughly, is okay. covered by... So I'll take an attack of opportunity from the swarm, if they have that ability. From the swarm? No, they don't. Okay. Uh, I'll move... <laughs> they all go my, <laughs> my full movement is half, is half, obviously, so 15. Um, and then, so, uh, as I prepare... More than to, speed form. Sorry. Yeah, the speed form gives me basically half my movement back, Sorry. Right? otherwise I'd be quarter. Um, having tapped into the witch light to uh, increase my movement with my horrific, like, uh, uh, you know, alchemic fleshlight, uh, Torbeck's arms, will, as a bonus action, will uh, attempt to elongate and uh, the fingers will turn into these horrific uh, uh, bladed fingernails, they look like, as I activate my magenta toxin. Um, oh. I'll take 1d6 to myself, mm-hmm. uh, but it adds 1d6 to all of my attacks. Perfect. Remember who's disadvantaged, by the uh, way. I took one point of damage. Good. I think so. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm uh, disadvantaged on attack. No, I don't think you are. Um, so then I'm just going to make two attacks, uh, and I'm going to pray that I get to be Bash Bros with Gideon and get some crits here. Your advantage, though. I'm advantaged? Yeah, the next person that my, attacks him my, oh, is advantaged. Okay, well, the first one will definitely hit. That's a 24 to hit. That hits. Uh, the second attack will be a... Ooh, not so good. Twist it. I'll twist one. Yeah, twist I'll twist one. one. Twist one. Uh, I'll dread it. One. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I will only attack with one. The other one will miss, provided... Just make it... Hold on. Hold on. Just let me make sure. It's 8 plus 6 is 14... I don't have to, no, I'm not gonna hit seven. I'm not gonna hit sixteen. Well you you can roll again, you'll just be a disadvantage. That's how I would roll oh. me dreading a twist. I'll, I'll so you get a, another yeah. roll. I'll take a chance. But it's gonna be at disadvantage. Okay. Yeah, why not? Roll the birds. Well there's the natty oh. twenty. Oh. Uh, but I, my lowest is still a twenty three to hit. Okay. So Damn. you you still you still get it, but you don't get a natty you don't get a natty twenty. Uh so I will make two attacks. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 24 total points of damage. Damn. The uh, 5 of it, if it matters, is... Uh, if we, In here, the rules are fire, but you can rule it as poison or whatever you want, if that matters. Uh, 5 of it would be from the toxin itself, the magenta okay. toxin. Uh, and that's my turn. Okay. And the shimmering glow now fades as Torbeck has used it to enhance his you, claw. You utilize mm. um, your raw abilities with the power of the witch light fueling you, and you do a significant ad- amount of damage to these cobras. Um, they are lashing about this way and that. They, they hiss in pain, but they are unrelenting guardians of this temple as they are, and they continue, you continue to hear this um, this strange thrumming sound coming from the insides of their throat as they prepare for something. Um, what did you get initiative-wise? 24. Okay, Frost, go ahead. I forgot to you do Hootsie. Can I just have her attack the swarm next to me? Sure. I'm just gonna do both mauls on it. One's gonna, one is only gonna be a, one, yeah, one, one's gonna totally mess for what sure. What was it? It was four plus eight, it was eight. Four plus eight? Yeah, or it was four plus four, so eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then she's gonna go with another mall attack. That's twelve. That misses. 
She's, it's just been a hot day. Yeah. She can't see through all oh, of the sun, sunblock and the sunglasses and the, sunglasses and the big hat. Incredible. Uh, she's not really safe. She's like you're, sure, you're doing so fun. well, Hoochie. You're doing so well. Frost. Um, can someone do something about these scarabs? I'm going to reach into the mind of the three minds of the cobra. Oh. And I'm going to start to try to twist their thoughts, try to confuse it, try to break one of the minds, perhaps, and uh, uh, cause it to uh, uh, be filled with uh, pain and fear and uh, uh, racking sounds. I will cast Dissonant Whispers, and uh, it needs to make a wisdom saving throw, and I'm going to spend uh, three of my beans to empower it and make it a disadvantage. So I, think okay. I think it's empowered. Uh, DC is 16. Well, they have a plus zero, and I rolled two 16s. Man. If you don't believe me. Oh, no, I believe you. Um, do I have any bonus actions? It's fucking crazy. Does it matter um, intellect for that? I'm assuming it does, because oh, some no, spells no, say they require it. Um, that's, that's all that's, that happens. Uh, I the fireball? It's within 30 feet of me. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I don't know where it is. I'm going to also attempt to push it and try to move it five feet backwards Ooh. to see if I can trigger uh, an attack of opportunities from Torbeck and from Gideon. I would say you would know that you moving something does not trigger opportunity attacks. Yes. They have to willingly move. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, that one I did know. Oh. Would you want to move it off of where it's where it's guarding, perhaps? As a you imagine is guarding the temple. Uh, then that will be the conclusion of my turn. It the the sound that it's been making amplifies, and all three heads open and spit acid into the air that surrounds Ooh. all of you in a um, in a sixty foot radius sphere. Yeah. Um, I need you all to make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm still okay on these, I think. Oh, yeah, oh, dex. We're not disadvantaged or anything, are we? No. Dex, I'm, I'm, I'm huge. It's gonna say 17. Oh, oh, God. Oh, my God. 16. 21. I have a plus Ooh. 9. 16 might be. Twist it, twist it. Whoa. 16 might be good enough. Well, yeah. 16 might be good enough. Yeah. Dirty 20. I'll roll the dice. I got a 16. What did everyone get? Oh, 23. 17. I got a 16. What did you get? 21. What did you get? 30, 20. Um, Don't hmm. you look at me. Don't, hmm? don't you look at me. What do you mean? Oh, you know what I mean. I would like Gricko, Frost, and Kremi to reroll on Dreading. Oh! 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 Is, we got fucked. <laughs> Damn! 14. <laughs> Dirty ten? Ten. Oh, wow. Ten? Thirteen. Oh my god, this is gonna be like the fucking <laughs> fuck you, Spider-Man, and we're gonna turn into CGI skeletons. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get From the pumpkin ter- bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Those of god. you that have failed, which is Frost, Grico, and Kremmy, oh! are going to take 20 acid oh! damage. And you are, your skin is popping and melting. Oh. Unless you do ah. something to to ah. remove the acid, you will continue to burn ah. beneath the acid oh at the gosh. at the end of each of your turns. Um, <laughs> the other two take half damage. Okay, and but we don't have the uh, lingering effect. You do not have the lingering effect. Oh, wait, should we take ten? You ten, take ten, ten points. Correct. No. I can do this all day, baby. <laughs> Gideon. Oh my god. Uh, let me let me just make sure this is. Y'all were just shit. running you you were rolling too high. I just no, I had to I, mean, I had to cut you down a path. That's the point of the dreads. That's the point of the dreads. No, I fucking love it. Take down our twists. The twists and the dreads make this beautiful. Uh, I will uh uh I'll start off well it's time to clear the way a little bit. Uh and I'll clasp my manacles together and draw a bit of fire into it and uh explode like almost in a shotgun blast, a blast of flame in a cone that will shoot out and I ideally hit the Hydra and this uh, swarm. I would say that would work, yeah. Um, and that is a, uh, it's a deck save to them. 
Uh, they have to deck save? Yeah. The swarm fails. The hydra also fails. So they take 3d6. Uh, oh. So five damage. Uh, to you both? Uh, anything in the cone that fails takes five okay. damage. Okay. Um, the swarm um, in front of you uh, is blasted by this, and it looks like it's barely hanging on. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, that's. Fun. If you're familiar with how I run swarms, they have to be hit twice. Got it. So it's uh, one damage. It. So like you can hit it for twenty; it doesn't matter. Right, it's, right. It each hit destroys half of the swarm. Yeah, fuck us up, Nikki. Yeah. Um, fuck us, just fuck, us, fuck our shit up. I, I am. <laughs> I'm about to. I'll then, uh, I'll then take a sure, deep about breath. To. I'll, I'll take a deep breath, flex down, uh, and action surge. <laughs> Oh, that's second one. Oops. Uh, and action surge, and I'll uh, I'll just turn to the hydra and try and just throw a bunch of punches into its body again. I guess all at disadvantage, uh, but I'll attack three times. All at disadvantage. Twelve. That misses. You gotta get in. Fifteen. That misses? Oh, yeah. Damn. You don't got it. You don't got it. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Uh, 14. Misses. Good twist. So one of them has twist. twist. One. I'll twist one. one. You're, you're, still gonna, you're still at disadvantage because that's an innate feature, so. Okay. Oh, 18. That hits. Oh, okay. Hey, go. here we go. I here like we go. I'm a fan. Um, bang. Well, eight. And then it'll take an additional three, so 11 points of fire damage, and um, oh. here he goes. I activate gear two. Let's okay. go, baby. Um, once again, the chains rattle as uh, steam fires out from my manacles on either arm. They shake and they tremble uh, as they launch out and lash around the body of the Hydra, uh, dealing an additional seven points nice. of fire damage, and it has to succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained for one minute. Ooh. Do your chains like black? Um, 18. Uh, uh, well. Uh, it, it beats it. So the chains will lash out, attempt to wrap around the body, and the Hydra just inhales deeply and snaps them off. Uh, you, you attempt to, uh, you all watch as steam begins to rise out of Gideon. Uh, he's activated uh, yet another gear on his manacles. Um, the embers in his hair, in his beard, uh, begin to crackle and pop as the innate fire within, within him begins to rise. The manacles lash out. They do a significant amount of damage, but as the chains try to link around the three-headed cobra, it is writhing and um, jolting from one side to the next, and the chains just cannot find purchase on this thing. Um, it is now going to look down at you, and there are still only two people within its vicinity. Uh, or there's, there are two people within its vicinity, but only one within reach, as all three heads are going to um, come down uh, Sorry, around you it's for their good. bite attacks. Oh, imagine in the Jujutsu Kaisen fight. <laughs> We're on the front lines. Um, a 19. Well. A natural one. 19 hits. Yeah. And an 18. Two hit. Okay. So two hit, I need you to make two uh, constitution saving throws. Hey. Please. All right, let me twist this one. I'm yeah. going to twist this yeah. one. Okay. The first con save is 22. Uh, that passes. The second is 13. 13. Oh, that uh, fails. Um, you are going to take 15 points of piercing damage as the heads bite into you, one <gasps> and then the other. Um, you feel the fangs, um, the 
You uh, feel that inside uh, of these fangs, there is a hollow tube that begins to pump poison into your body as the fangs sink, sink deeper into your flesh. Um, uh, and you are going to take an additional eight points of poison damage. How much is that total? Uh, 15 plus eight. 23. 23. You would imagine that if there were other people in uh, physical range with this, that that damage would be spread out around more people, but it's concentrated on a Gideon. Uh, with that, all of the all of the scarabs are going to buzz. There is one on you, Gideon. That one is going to make its attack. It is going to it is going to fail with a four. Um, there is the one that is behind um, Yornir, which is, I believe, Torbeck, is going to move towards towards Torbeck, yeah. yes. um, and that is going to hit. Get back here, punk. Um, there are <laughs> two on Frost. That one hits. Yeah. That one hits. 17. So, uh, natural 17 and natural 18. Yeah. Um, there's one on Gricko. Oh. I mean, oh. 11. I mean, is it 11 hit? <laughs> oh. Was that? 11, no. Oh, uh, 11 misses, no. Uh, 20 on Kremi. Yeah. So, Gricko, it will not hit you. The other ones will hit. I need all of you to roll killer. a constitution saving throw for me, please. With disadvantage. Um, but not me. Oh. Frost, you are going to take. Oh, Pretty good. Where'd it go? Wait. What, Frost, you're going to take three points. Awesome. You're going to take three points. Dodge, yes, I rolled three. a one Point and saves? I rolled a two. I don't know they, saves. Saves. they only oh, do 1d4. Why do they think it was a Probably probably um, the Torbeck, you are you take three points okay. of piercing damage. Okay. Kremi, you take four points. Uh, and I missed on Gideon too, so I shouldn't have rolled that. Um, and then so the three of you, I need constitution saving throws. 18. 17. 18. 20. All of you pass. Ooh. Um, those of you that were um, disadvantaged previously are no longer disadvantaged. You pay, you passed your save, so you shake off the poison um, that are you uh, you shake off the the buzzing around you um, that had been distracting you, and you feel your full focus um, come together as you engage in this battle. Crummy. Uh, hearing Frost shout out, can anyone do anything about these? And I'm covered in acid, and I'm being bitten by all these scarabs. And I say, I've had enough of this. You're in my world now. And I'm going to pull the dice out of my jacket. I'm going to turn my hand over, and they're going to start swirling this sort of like pink and purple and green light as I will toss them out, and they will roll to about here. Mm -hmm. And they'll sort of scatter into the sand, and you'll all of a sudden you'll see these shadows sort of start to grow and pulse. And from this point, within a 20 foot radius, shadow will erupt. Uh, so I think we're pretty much all in it, I think. Yeah. Figure one, two, three, four, one, two, <laughs> one, two, three, four. I think everyone but Hootsie. So basically it's this border right here. Um, and shadow will expand and expand and expand, covering this area, ah. and not just shadow, but everyone, you'll look around and you'll see that you're like almost knee deep in a swamp. Oh, it's oh, nearly shit. pitch black, but it's dark. It's almost black and white. You'll hear swamp creatures, uh, the snarl of an alligator, the call of a whippoorwill, uh, ominous jazz far away, and you'll, you'll hear a moan or a growl, or various unsettling, almost undead sounds sort of sloshing through the water. Uh, and almost like reality warps away from everyone, and all you can see <laughs> like, yeah. is, Perfection. is your own existence in the swamp. You are now alone in the swamp. And I'm casting Hunger of Hadar and and, uh, and flavoring it a little a little. Uh, what the fuck does that do? We're alone in the swamp. E everyone is now alone in the swamp. We can't see each other. We're all totally blinded for the sake of the spell. Uh, but you'll hear Crummy, uh, and I'll say, "Fellas, y'all better run." Uh, and I'm going to back out of it. Uh, what? And uh, but, but what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, let me see how this yeah, works. Yeah, I gotta hear how this spell works. I gotta know what. what oh, oh shit. shit! What a what a 
badass moves. <laughs> literally no yeah, man experience. Literally, like, actually. Literally. Yeah. That's so fucking uh, cool. No light, magical, or otherwise can illuminate the area. Uh, creatures inside are fully blinded. Um, it becomes difficult terrain, so it's hard to sort of move around the swamp. I don't know if that stacks with the uh, with the sand so, or whatever, but your your half speed. I would say for you, no. For them, it will affect them. So we'll be quartered. And then no, any it's not going to affect you. Just it it just it. yeah. Uh, swamp still is sand. just half. Yeah. yeah. Still, still just half. Just half. Any okay. creature yeah. that starts its turn in the area will there will be a uh, you things know, in the water. Things in the water oh. that 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 touch you or grab you and deal two d six cold damage. Shit. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you have to succeed on a two d six or sorry on a uh, dex saving throw or take an additional two d six acid damage as the swamp oh. and the. Uh, Unspeakable horrors, maybe a, a neon will of the wisp passes through oh, you. Oh my god. Um, this is insane. <laughs> Jesus. This is amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, you're uh, in the mire of Mystere. Huh. Uh, oh, but, that's but, my turn. Gricka. So, just so I understand. It's at the start of his turn? The start of his turn, he takes the, 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 the cold damage. Is it magical darkness? Yeah. It's magical darkness. Can we still make an attack at disadvantage? There's no fucking chance. You are. Blinded, but you could, yes, you would roll yeah, just, you, you would, you, roll you would just roll a disadvantage. Uh, how far is it? Do I even know? I'm I'm rolling a scatter die. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling a fucking scatter die. I have no idea where the fuck I'm going. That north is one. You take nine cold damage. Oh! Oh, shit. We would never have seen you. And then also a dex no, throw. Yeah, no, also no. a dex save. And then you have to make a dex save. I'm moving deeper into it. This is wild. <laughs> oh, no, no. Only if you end your turn in it is when you take the acid damage. So start is cold, end is acid. Uh, I am going to move. Can I move through the swarm? Uh, I Yeah, you can move through the swarm. <gasps> so the swarm similarly is blinded. So uh, but, but. I don't know how they would perceive. One, two... I walk right next to the cobra. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ah! What are you doing? I said, run! Run! Oh, God. oh they're singing in the swamp. They got crazy. Oh, God, I just got grabbed. What did ah. you roll for a scatter die? I rolled a d8. A d8, okay. D8. I, just do, I just do one as north. Perfect, perfect. Uh, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> Duke Ellington is playing. <laughs> Drifting over the swamp. Hootsie, come to Papa, too. Uh, Hootsie's like... Fuck you doing? She just gets out of yeah. it. <laughs> she's she was already out of it. Oh, she was. Oh, yeah, she, she, oh, she, she never answered. Okay. But all of a sudden, she, it's almost like she can look in, and it's just this like black and white swamp. Black. Oh yeah. my god. Uh, I am going to. Uh, uh, help me, big fungus. Help me. <laughs> uh, as I am. <laughs> As I am just going to, you'll hear uh, funky jungle tunes along with the wailing jazz, <laughs> and I am going to just cast, um, I guess I will attempt to just cast a healing word on myself, and uh, healing touch. And that's what, that's my turn, so I'm just going to be healing. Okay. Make a dex save. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I fell. Okay, Oof. so what will you do? T uh, ten. Okay, so first you took the nine points of cold damage. I think so. Yeah. And now you take another nine points of cold damage as a whippoorwill is maybe on a branch above you, and all of a sudden it flutters and it flies like through you. But as it flies through, you notice it has like three eyes on either side and maybe like two beaks. Oh, uh, oh it's oh, <laughs> about to be so this reminiscent. This is some sort of hereditary shit. Who uh, needs dreads when you've got crummy? Yeah. Oh, like, this is so reminiscent of the Dark Star <laughs> missile. Bum, 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 uh, bum, I hate bum, this. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I'm going to take my. I'll be using my uh, my draconic version for the the cure. Torbeck, your turn. Um, I will have Torbeck and all of his infinite stupidity. Uh, is still a bugbear and still has like a hunter instinct. Uh, he would, I would attempt to make three more attacks on where I believe the cobra to still be, uh, before attempting to heed Kremi's uh, uh, wisdom and run. I'll take the damage first. Oh, yeah. Eight. Hey. Dang. All right, so I'm gonna roll three attacks at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, extra attack and bonus attack. Uh, the first one is definitely going to miss. The second one is absolutely going to miss. 
And the third one oh. is 100%, 4,000, multi bazillion percent going to Is that two ones? Yes. Oh my wow, God. you, you uh, look boost. <laughs> then I will scatter die. Uh, no, it's just magical darkness. Uh, and then... Eight, seven, six. I'm going to run this direction, but I can only go... You, like, immediately feet. burst out into the bright okay. sunlight. All right. Um, so you're out of it. So and you, you were not next to the cobra. No, I'm 10 feet away. Which is why I missed all of my attacks. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> uh, Frost, it's your turn. I'm blind. But you are out of the you're out of the thing. Torbeck. Tor Torbeck is now out of the swamp. And he took all the damage he needed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yep, no Frost, take God, I'm rolling hot, guys. Nine, <laughs> no. nine damage. Nine Don't damage. roll max against me. That's all I can ask. Nine damage. Don't roll max damage. Um, I'm blind. You're blind. But. Have I lost my ability to sense minds around me? Mm. No. Can I endeavor to find Kremi's mind? Yes. Do I need to roll for that? Uh, no. You are familiar with Kremi and Kremi's mind. You know that he's within a certain range of you, and I, I imagine you would be able to do this if you closed your eyes. So being in this darkness wouldn't matter. I do close matter. my eyes. I, I'm confronted with this vision, and I close my eyes to shield myself from it, and having heard Kremi what I deduce is that he is casting a spell and that this is a part of it. I feel him 30 feet behind me, 35, and I will endeavor to teleport. I will focus my mind to shift Ooh. from where I am, 30 feet back, 20, 25, 30, Ooh. and I will yeah, kill you. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> explode will within him. Cast Misty yeah. Step and pop. Oh, nice. nice. Mm. Into the into the sunlight. <laughs> Grammy, that was a dirty trick. You told me to take care of them. That's what I'm doing. And I will uh, take what action I need to take to remove the acid that still covers me off. Uh, <gasps> as, I, as I wipe myself That's clean. That's right, I'm still covered. Uh, would I have taken using... damage at the start of my turn? Um, mm. No, it's at the end of your turn for the acid. Okay. So you, you have the ability to use your action to get rid of it. So That's if you you used bonus a bonus action, action to, to teleport, you then um, you say what you need to to Kremi, and you spend the rest of your turn um, taking uh, whatever bits of cloth that you have to remove the acid from you. Um, and you are, for all intents and purposes, clean. Why you, I say always travel with a towel. Those of you that are still inside <laughs> of this, um, this illusory swamp are hearing the sounds of the swamp around you, and... To you, this is your reality. But this creature is still there, and you can hear the noises as it's, it's making as it is attempting to refill its, its acidic sack um, to let loose another barrage of acidic spit. It doesn't seem to be able to accomplish the task this round, and oh. it is Gideon's turn. Are I, I should take an acid damage. I should take acid damage too. Then yes, please. And then please are we? Do. Am I unable to oh, see through right. the sphere? Right, like like I can't see you guys on the other side. Correct. It just no, looks like an empty swamp. You literally, it's like a horrible. Oh, so that oh, that is four so points, Kremi. Cool. Four. Four, and okay. then three for Gricko. Oh, thank God. Awesome. And so it can't see me either. So I'm just still in. I'm in. That's I'm right. in Gede, basically right now. Yes. That basically there. There's a, a like. Imagine <sighs> like reality is opened up in, and now all of a sudden there's a swamp here instead of the. Okay. Mm. Grimmy, are you sure you can you can you undo this? <laughs> I can undo this at a fucking moment's notice. But I told everybody to run, and it should take care of those bug fucks. So the only person who's removed their acid out of the three of you is Frost. 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 Mundo. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Gideon, on, it's your turn. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Kremi, could you always do this, man? <laughs> do the uh, damage. Do the Gideon damage. Oh. Do the Gideon damage. He's in trouble. Oh, oh thank God. Thank okay. God. Okay. All right. All right. I love when you do one of them alone. That's like the best. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Love. No! I agree. I agree. Um, I, uh... I was like, I was toe to toe with this thing. I was landing just like punches into it. I'd like to just kind of like reach a palm out and see if I could uh, press against its body. And if I think that that's reasonable, I'd like to try and just like skirt around it and it like like keep my hand against it and move uh, as much as I think I can out of the swamp. Off. Find the yeah. kidney. Yeah. Uh, I would say you are able to, you don't even necessarily have to touch it. You can feel the heat coming off of this and you're able to stay within <sighs> melee range of this and skirt around it. He's out of it now, right? Yeah, I don't know. How far does uh, he need to go to get out of it? Yeah, it's, it's like barely here. 
Oh, so yeah. probably right. Yeah, yeah. that's probably um, right. However, as you step behind it, you are now oh. in the roiling sands. Oh, no! And you immediately feel yourself begin to submerge beneath the sand. You're about waist deep in sand right now. Uh-oh. Uh, we're... Where are the roiling sands in relation to where I am? Immediately, so basically from halfway through it all the way behind it is the roiling sands. Where would I have to move to get out of the roiling sands? Um, Not next to it, and not on its sides, and not on its back. Thank you. That's exactly. (laughs) Back into the horror fucking swamp, I guess. Squares there, though, right? Um, uh, well, uh, And I would say you would be able to see that, so if you want to change how you would move, that's fine. I'll let no, you make that choice, no, but... I'm, I'm right the fuck here. You big, stupid, snake, ugly, fucking monster thing, take this! And I'd try and uh, throw two more punches at it. Okay. As you think, that you go from a head, stomach to yeah. its crotch. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, 18. Uh, 18 hits. That hits, okay. Seven plus five is 12 uh, points of damage. Uh, And I will once again kind of breathe in deep. You'll see the flames all around me. My beard, my hair will kind of like uh, plume out for a moment uh, as I uh, do a little... Um, what's it called? Um, the only, second wind. The only person inside the swamp now, outside of the monsters, is... Is Greco. Greco. Uh, With that, we'll go back to the other music. Thank you, though, for the immersion. Oh, no, that was amazing. Are you kidding me? Oh, shit. Oh, with that, that is your turn. That's you my did turn. 12 yeah. points of damage, and that's it? 12 points of damage, and I, and I heal a little as okay. I cast second wind. The flames the, uh, grow larger on me for a moment. The cobra, um, the cobra moves around, and being a snake, having blind sight, it no looks one head towards Gricko, one head towards Gideon. Oh, the no. other one looks around, and it is oh. going to do... Gricko. Two of the heads move towards Gricko, uh, and they are both going to attempt to bite into you. Uh, the first bugs. one is a 16. Oh! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and it misses. I don't know how. I'm Mr. Magooing my way. Yeah. The next one is going to hit. And then 18 plus 7 is going to hit you. Oh, yeah. It does take four points of cold damage. Okay. As a oh. sorrow swarm, basically, like, it, reaches um, out. Like, oh. You you can't see you can't see into this space, right? No. Uh, uh, Gideon, uh, Gricko, you look up as um, it begins to to hiss and uh, rear back, opening its mouth, exposing its fangs, droplets of acid um, or droplets of poison uh, dripping off of the fangs as it lets out a a hiss of pain as. Um, cold pierces through it from an unknown source and it you watch as its body um, is not moving as dexterously as it was before. It is becoming sluggish. It looks like it's struggling. Oh. Um, but you are going to take, I need you both to make constitution saving throws, please. That's from Agwe, you dumb, ugly bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grico, you're going to take you. five points of damage. Or, sorry, nine points, points of damage. Oh, on points. Twist totally twist. Totally twist. And yeah. you're going to take three damage. points of damage. Or not three. Why am I saying three? Seven twist. points of damage. Seven points of damage? Seven con, and nine. Con save is 23. Hey, Rich. Con save cold is, damage. I did. I did the four. It is 18. Okay. Con save? Uh, 23. Both of you are uh, feel the fangs uh, as they dig into your flesh and begin to <sighs> pump the poison into your body. Through. But you have experienced this before, and you are able to um, shake off the effects uh, as you feel the um, the heat of the the venom being pumped through your veins. Come on. Um, and that's it. Starting. He needs to make a oh. save. Uh, oh, he needs to make a deck save. Fifteen. That fails. So, 
it's sort of weirdly half in it, half out of it, as uh, a will-o'-wisp of like bright purple light sort of passes through, and it takes five points of acid damage. Nice. And did the scarabs um, get to go? I'm not really? sure where the scarabs go. Um, the scarabs go now. Um, there is a scarab on. Oh, they yes, they all and have to all take. They're all blinded. They also have. Um, they all take blindside. six points of cold damage, or I can roll. Oh no, the scarabs don't. Oh, they don't the, go. No, they take six points of damage, is what you said? Six points of cold damage. Every single one of them. Well, they're all in it, so I can okay. roll separately, or I can the, just, No, that's okay. fine. Number one dies. This is the second time it's been hit, okay. so nice. number so one sweet. dies. Uh, all oh. of the rest of them now have one out of their two. They're, the swarms have halved. Yeah. Um, the scarabs that were in them, um, you watch as they let out these uh, clicking... Um, insectoid shrieks as they shrivel up and their wings stop flapping. They fall to the sands. Oh, swamp um, pass through. And ah. they, um, though half of each of these swarms still maintains its, um, uh, its form, uh, they are going to attempt to attack. Uh, two swarms are going to attempt to um, Attack um, Rico, and I'm just gonna they roll a disadvantage sight? for. They don't. Oh. I'm gonna roll a disadvantage for them. If they hit, they'll move towards you and attack. Okay. Um, but this if they scary. don't hit, yes. they stay where they are. They're that good. one, the first one Definitely misses. Work. Second one hits. So one of them is going to hit on you, Grico. Ah, ah. Um, it is. That's not the right die. It's going to do two points of damage, and I need you to make a Constitution saving throw for me, please. Oh, like um, crush it, 20. 20. One is going to be on Frost. Two That's a fail. Soon. One's on Torbeck. That's a fail. Ooh. And then one's on whoever's out there in the corner. Well, so they're still in it. So I don't know if the, if he would see Tor. Like, would they see? Well, they're, they're, they're they're they're, they're like just trying to move oh, towards oh, something. Oh, if they right. fail their hit, yeah. they fail. The last one failed, so it was only the hit on Grico that. <laughs> That passed. Okay. Um, and so you. And what was your con? Oh, I uh, got it to twenty. Twenty. You are. Um, the buzzing does not detract you. You are still listening to the sounds of the swamp around you, and the the cacophonous buzzing of the swamp um, just intermingles with theirs, and it's not enough to um, pull your attention away, as it is Crummy's turn. So they all die. No. Well, they take the oh, oh, they, they didn't make the deck saves, actually. That's right. Yeah. Take the I will make one deck save for all of them. Okay. I rolled an 18. I dread it. You can't <laughs> dread it! <laughs> Divination wizard? They don't take half, they just they don't take anything. But... Oh, that's a good point. Let me oh. check. If they take half, they're still dead. But it's also irrelevant, because they'll take damage at the... At the their next Still turn, the next oh, turn. Yeah, and they're, yeah, they're yeah. going to die before they can do anything anyway. So we just remove so. them now? Well, no, no, they're not dead yet. They're not uh, dead yet. Yeah. Um, Kremi, it's your turn. No, they don't. It's, it's all or nothing. Kremi, it's your turn. Uh, knowing, sort of having a sense of, of, I was sort of out of it when I dropped it, and knowing that this fella's here, I'm going to sort of one and a half to, oh, this is difficult terrain still? Mm-hmm. 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 It's all okay. the sands. How clear of a shot would I have on this guy if sort of the swamp goes to like here? Uh, on what guy? On, on, like, like how, how tall would he be towering over the I'm swamp? gonna say no. Uh, you will be at disadvantage and his AC is higher. Okay. This is so high. I'm oh. just gonna kind of get a sense of where I think mm-hmm. he is. And I'm just gonna oh. point my cane out and shoot two Elder's Blasts. He's gonna hit Rico. He's gonna hit Rico. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't a natural one. The first one is going to be a, they almost certainly Misses, uh, that is a 10. Misses. That might have. 15? Misses. Okay. Uh, and then for, do I have any bonus actions? Probably not. Um, and you are going to take one point of uh, acid damage. One point of acid damage. Okay. Yeah, I'm still coded. And I'm just shooting. Gricko. I feel the acid burning in my flesh. Uh, I am going to... (laughs) I'm running in this direction. I'll bump into this thing. Ah! Uh Ah! And then tumble out to this spot. I presume it it ends right here, right? It ends... It would end here. (laughs) 
Ah! I tumble into <laughs> No, it's not any better out here, man. Don't come this way. <laughs> I look up. As I'm sinking in, I'm You like, are waist you're your neck I'm deep. I'm neck in deep the is my head yeah. like Ah! <laughs> And I'm just gonna try to use my action to skip the wipe the acid off. Oh, you also take the cold damage. <laughs> Eight points of cold damage. Yes. Rewind. Rewind, motherfucker. Oh, my baby, I'm not dead. Oh, thank God. I'm not dead yet. Well, you might be. Oh, no, you're out. If you get out of it, you're fine. I'm using my action, and I will say. <laughs> Being true, it needs healing badly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my healing word. You, um, you move and you are covered in acid. You are heavily wounded. You are disoriented, and the sound of the buzzing is distracting. As you step and tumble down into the undulating sand, finding yourself neck deep in this sand, uh, but the sand itself seems to be. Um, wiping away the acid that was coating you. It begins to clump around the acid itself, oh. and you feel the the pain from that uh, dissipate. Like uh, and you don't box. take oh, damage so at the end of it. I don't need to use my action then to do that. No, you need to use your action. Okay, so That's yeah. how I'm, I'm justifying thank you, thank you. it. I'm going to just do that, and then I will heal my... With the bonus action. With, with my bonus, bonus action, action yep. and I'm done. Torbeck. Um, you said I was out, right? Like, yes, I know yeah, you yeah. drew the line. Um, You're out of the swamp. This, okay. this is the, the sand. Okay. Yeah, I know that the sand is gonna. Is the sand? Is the is the roiling tumultuous sand gonna slow me down even more? Yes. Fuck. I just have to get here. <laughs> That's all. You guys will get there. Uh, you can't get here. I have to just. I have. I'm like quartered movement. I, you should only be half movement. Okay. Then I can get here. get here, and you can hit him. Is well. Is I just want to get ten feet away. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm basically. Uh, Torbeck is is still, you know, his his hands are dripping with this horrific magenta toxin. Uh, he sees that 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 Gideon is like sinking into the sand <laughs> and, and, and doesn't want to touch. I don't, he doesn't want to touch you though. He's scared. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he wants to help. Ah, Torbeck is coming, Gideon! And uh, you will see me make three attacks oh, over you as I'm trying to uh, finish off this this snake to the best of my. Oh ability. yeah, get him, man, get. And look out for the sand, it's fucking quick! <laughs> so, so I will get within 10 feet and probably get into this horrific sand. I'll make three attacks, assume straight up, mm -hmm. since I'm no longer disadvantaged. Can he see in there? What? Can he he's see? Not he's in, in the, the sand, he's in the... Right, but I'm saying he's outside of the Hadar, can he see into the Hadar? The the snake is only a half in it. Okay. So, so the, the back half of the cobra is outside the swamp. Thank you for rolling uh, that for me. First attack is going to Perfect. hit with 24. Yeah, that hits. Second attack is gonna hit 16. 16 hits. Okay. And then the last one is gonna be, come on, I'm so close. Twist no, it. I'm gonna twist, twist, it. Twist, 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 twist it, twist it. Natural. Ah! Yeah! Hold it. Let's go! Oh, so go. I'll make the first two attacks. Now let's go, Uh It's gonna be <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, plus seven is 19 plus 10 is 29, and then the crit will be, uh, unfortunately, just 2d6s because it's the my offhand. I'm, I'm, I'm playing by the rules. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 29 plus 13 is 42. 42. Yep. How do you like to do this? Yeah. Oh! Mm. Feeling the witch like coursing through okay, my veins, right. and my limbs are all unnaturally long and gnarled and, and, and kind of like bending at weird angles, and I have these horrific flesh knives on, on the end of my uh, hands. Uh, I am rushing to try to help Gideon, and I want to end this as much as I can. Torbeck will dig deep, and with three horrifically deep gashes, pouring as much of this magenta toxin into this creature as he can, uh, he is just trying to shred this beast apart. Blood spurting you, back And you, as you watch uh, as uh, a, uh, almost, almost like a madness overcomes Torbeck, and for a second you see his eyes flash, and they are no longer his eyes. It is as if something or someone is looking out through his skull. But then you see Torbeck's face return as the bloodlust overcomes him and he rips 
scale after scale to a fang and uh, head. He wrenches his long, gnarled fingers around the necks of these things, and you hear the snapping of the the cartilage and bone inside of this snake yeah. as um, mm, he rips it <laughs> into pieces. You are all covered in blood and viscera by the time oh. Torbeck is done destroying these. Uh, these uh, this creature, this multi-headed creature. And the buzzing is the only sound that's left for but a moment. As Kremi's magic slowly Ooh. fades, you watch as the last remnants of the swarms um, harden and shrivel and die in the heat of the sun. The magics, the death magics that Kremi is imbued with, finally overtaking them. And you are left now, alone, standing a hundred feet from this temple. You're bloodied, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're hot, you're dehydrated. Gideon, you are sinking into the sand very right. quickly. Greco, oh, you feel the sand begin to spill into your mouth. And you feel that you do not have that much time left before you will be fully submerged beneath the sands. Greco, man, here! I, I whip one of my chains towards Greco if I think that it can fit, and I try and whip the other one towards Hootsie. If I if I would get the sense that Hootsie could try and like pull us out. Um, oh. Yes, I would say. That's hmm. pretty clever. Do athletics or acrobatics? Oh, don't mind if I do athletics. And then oh. I'm gonna have uh, Hootsie roll a strength, um, strength it. check to see if she can cocked. Cocked. pull them out. You all saw it was cocked. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I good or am I also in the sand? Am I far enough away? You were far enough away. Awesome. Uh, go grab on, man, Hootsie, pull us out! Uh, I rolled a 23. Nice. You, uh, you have, these chains have been a part of you for as long as you can remember at this point. And you use them effortlessly. They're an extension of yourself. As you whip one around Gricko, and you're able to drag him through you, or towards you through the sand, you immediately feel that the sand is starting to harden and stiffen. That now that this creature's dead, that something about the sand is changing, and if you're not quick, there will be no escape for you. <gasps> as you toss the other chain out and you just pray and hope that Hootsie catches it. 20. And you hear, you hear the sound, <laughs> not of claw, but of beak meat chain. <gasps> as Hootsie snaps down onto the chain and uses the full Ooh. force of her owlbear body. Oh, and she is, is a <laughs> small owlbear. But she is still an owlbear, and she is large in comparison to most things, and her strength is much, she's much stronger than you even give her credit for. She is effortlessly Fucking able owlbear. to pull you back <laughs> and um, and pull you from the sand. As we all are of you, sailing through the air. <laughs> as all of you watch, as they're being... I do a for you to like, literally do tug of war with a tiger. I, I don't know anything about that. Uh, <laughs> you watch as you're being pulled from the sand as it begins to level out. And it begins to, the hole that the snake had come out of the lair uh, is covered up and filled in. And as a, a rush of wind comes through, it's after a second, you look around and you realize that had you not just encountered this thing, had you not just experienced all of this, you would never have known that there was a lair beneath the sand. Those of you that are close to it, you put your foot down on it and it feels like it's packed in. It's not soft, you couldn't sink into this. And it leads straight towards the temple. And as you, uh, as more wind blows through, you begin to see that some more of that um, winding pathway has been exposed and that it gets narrower and narrower and narrower as if it's in the shape of a snake's tail. Hoochie! That's my girl! Once it becomes totally silent <sighs> inside the swamp, I would like flick my wrist and the 
shadow, which almost in an instant, back into the dice, oh, and then oh, they fly back to my hand, and I put them in my jacket pocket. Y'all doing okay? Oh, no. Yeah. Bootsy, great fucking work! Nice pull! No, Torbeck, up top, man! Great shot! <laughs> It's horrific dripping in the gentle witch light, and I have these horrific knife fingers. Ah, chest bump, chest bump, man! Come on! Stands up on her hind legs and joins in the trip for a triple high five. She also chest bumps you. Oh, that's what you get for eating your rat snacks, Hootsie. That's what I told you, big and strong. You get them gains just like the golfers. Oh. And as the adrenaline wears off. Yeah, I would say that like Torbeck's limbs would begin to uh, like go back to normal. His fingers would turn back into regular fingers and hands, and there would be an exhausted look over him. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, good job! Who killed a snake? The sun beats down on you. I you breeze. feel tired, dehydrated, exhausted. I've raised a normal. <sighs> And just kind of look at you while I'm like covered in snake blood and guts. You, you okay, buddy? <laughs> Torbeck Never. accidentally long scarfed him. <laughs> <laughs> feel good though? <sighs> Torbeck's feeling okay given the circumstances. <laughs> boat God drinks. Boys in the band <laughs> ordered boat drinks. You feel good? <laughs> I gotta go where it's warm. Oh fuck, where are uh, Oh, it's so warm. Let's get the fuck into this temple, man. It looks like it's about a 10 minute walk away. Maybe there will be shelter. Well, at least there's a fucking path now. Everybody do a quick shadow check. Just make sure they're not moving, all right? So I look over my shoulder and- Grammy, what the check. fuck was that? You see another pop of that strange light on the yeah. oh. Oh. I hope that's unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. That was, uh. I, I, don't, I didn't want to have to do that, but they were fucking swarms of who knows what. It wasn't looking good. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna take all of these. I'm, I'm not sharing. I'm, I'm not sharing. Thank you, Big Funkus. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that was one fucking crazy thing you did, Krimi. Holy shit, man, that oh, was awesome. Yeah, apologies for the <laughs> horrors you, you 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 may have seen in there. Uh, it didn't hurt too bad, did it? Uh, Torbeck's having a bad day. <laughs> All right, come on, buddy, come oh. on over here. Let's sh let's schlep on in there. Yeah, my, my speed is back yeah. to quarter. <laughs> as long as y'all don't die inside, that's what matters. So you know, y'all are living. And Where the fuck was, was that, Grimmy? You see, it was... What was in the water? Wait, what happens if we would have died inside it, man? I was pretty close. You know, probably would have. You know, the swamp would have claimed the sun soul. is beating down on. We you. should get going. <laughs> I'll explain later. Let's go. Let's go. If I climb on top of Hootsie uh, and I grab onto her, like, oh, you look so good. Uh, your son hat. Uh, we are slower moving though, unless uh, Gideon's like dragging my ass. Uh, so it's you know, I'm like man. moving at a quarter speed. I got and you, you are know. having this conversation while yes. you move. We're walking. Right, we're walking. We're moving. It's like a winding path. It it winds, but it's not like a huge winding path. It, like it, a sneaky snake. it just looks like the winding, um, the winding tail end of a snake. And as as you look at it, the the stones themselves are not placed like normal stones would be. They're placed like scales. They're smooth. You reach down and touch them, and it feels smoother than you would expect, and not as hot as you would expect, but still warm. It's strange. It's a little uncomfortable, but it's right. firm. And you are able to step onto it. And when you do, you feel your ability to move become a lot easier. You're no longer <sighs> trudging through the sand. Your muscles are able to relax as the Ugh. firmness of the stone beneath you allows you to propel yourself forward the way that you were used to. Though you're still feeling tired, that exhaustion that had overcome you has lessened a little bit. 
Gideon, Dormak is sorry again. Sorry for what? Cut carving the fucking steaks off that thing and not saving the rest for <laughs> some of us? No, no, it's Dormak's movement. Dormak is starting to stiffen up. Also, Dormak's muscles hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it is wild how often we fight monsters with erections. <laughs> oh, who said anything about an erection? Oh, shit, what were you talking about? I didn't have one, that's for sure. <laughs> Don't look at Dormak. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We'll just get the hell in here, straighten up. Oh you, man, maybe take a fucking breath. And then uh I don't know. You continue to walk. And in your exhaustion you find a bit of silence as you think about what's just happened and what you're moving towards. You walk past the two large obelisks, they're not connected to this temple. They just are a marker off in the distance of where the entrance lies. And as you walk through it, you, the sounds around you begin to change. The sounds of the sand rushing past is overshadowed by the sounds of cicadas, croaking frogs, the sounds of the swamp. I just happened to have that prepared. No way! It, it, this wasn't me, fellas. Grammy, please turn it off. Oh, oh man, I don't think we Why, Mr. Grammy? We can't last through another one, man. What in the hell? And is in this? front of you, <laughs> you see what appears to be a sphinx guarding the entrance to this thing. <laughs> and as you get closer, you realize. It's not a sphinx at all. You've seen sphinxes before, though the positioning of this creature is exactly what you would have expect of a sphinx. It's on a pedestal like you would expect of a sphinx. This is a bird, a swan goose, its neck elongated like that of a swan, but its body very clearly that of a goose, and it is completely motionless. <laughs> It stares straight ahead, guarding the entrance, this stone square entrance that leads deep into what's uh, clearly an open temple. Uh, behind this, you see a courtyard of sorts. But the sounds of the swamp are unnerving. It doesn't fit this place. And as you get closer, the heat of the sun diminishes a little, and you feel a nice cool breeze kiss your cheeks and moisture, humidity. It's still warm, but it's not that dry heat any longer. It's a warm heat. It is strange. It's uncanny. But it is a neck Bashan temple, if a little different than what you would expect. Great. Yeah. Are you seeing a swamp as well? It's you don't see a swamp. We don't see a swamp. We're you hearing. hear a swamp. And we feel all uh, you see sand all around you, you see the limestone temple in front of you, even the courtyard um, back behind this swan goose is filled with sand and what appear to be um, Nekbeshin um, statues. You see the uh, the pictographs etched into the etched into the stone. Um, you even notice you can't see it from this distance as you're not right on the swan goose sphinx, um, but you see that there is some symbol carved into the um, the the doorway that leads into the courtyard. Are you hearing the swamp as well? That's a swamp, all right, and it feels like a swamp. We don't know how much time has passed here. It tastes like a swamp too. Are you, are you seeing a giant swoose? A what? A giant swoose, man. Is it, are you seeing something around this giant neck? Is, is it a statue of a... It appears to be, yeah. Crimmy. Yeah, I mean, that's probably one of their ancient gods. I mean, yeah. Could the deadline be due? Could this be... <laughs> Remy? Oh! Even here? <laughs> ha -ba -ba. Do I ask the question? <laughs> Does the swamp remind me of either Agwe or of Gede? <gasps> the sounds uh, that I'm hearing. I would have you roll 
the taste and the smell, right? I've already got my A's. History. <laughs> that advantage? Yeah, I will have you roll at advantage. You're swamp, you're swamp creep. Yeah, you know about swamp. No, no, don't give him advantage. Make him spend the twist. <laughs> I'm gonna still smell oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm gonna awesome. dread it. So it will not be at advantage. This roll will just be straight. Oh. Or it'll be disadvantage, sorry. Disadvantage. So I can roll again. You yes. can roll again, but you're disadvantaged. But disadvantage. Oh. Instead of just a straight roll, it's disadvantage. Oh, blow my desk. Thanks, Keith. Sometimes you gotta roll the hard 20. Disadvantage. Uh, Torvik is right here. Don't do that. Come oh. on! Oh, no, that's a natural one. Oh, no! So, hold on, let's see what my plus is. Probably oh. horrible. I mean, uh, there's no way. Two. <laughs> you. You taste the air. You close your eyes and you listen to the sounds. You breathe in the smells. You feel the wet heat of the swamp. And it reminds you of home. It's hard to tell one swamp from another. You've been in Hither for so long, it also reminds you of Hither. That's true. Mm. I don't, I don't know, Frost. I mean, how the fuck would he get all the way here? There's no fucking way. If it was the bear, it may be, but I don't don't smell any cigar smoke. I don't smell any rum. If he is here, this could be the end. Yeah, if he's here, it's the end, I think. Unless we fucking run right what now. What is he gonna do to us? Where where would we run? I don't know. You're right. I don't know where we run. Look. If it is him, let's just try to talk it out, right? I can make a deal with him and I can maybe get us a little bit more time. I have the He's things in my pack. Yeah, maybe no. we can trade. And if we let him know that we're in with some fucking powerful people in the Feywild, he might be interested. You know, maybe we, we can spring his old business associate. What was his name? Phipps or something? Pip? Nib. Nib? Yes. I oh, think yeah. we have some bargaining chips, so let's not fucking shoot. Well, what if this comes to blows? Oh, well, we. I cannot afford another fight. There's no, no blows with the Baron. Not man. without serious risk. I'm gonna fucking fight to my last breath if not, it comes to that. <clears throat> not without He's water. just a guy, right? Well, listen, yeah. we're in neck bats, man. We just gotta tell him we're on the brink of some massive fucking like heist. It's it's old money all around here. Just, you see what I did back there? Just imagine that, but he's probably like at least ten times more powerful than I am. <laughs> all right, M- Mr. Krabby, if it comes to that. Maybe we can bulk and prod the other. If it comes to it. No, no, you think. You're thinking right, Tobek. That's exactly right. You understand? If it's him and things go south, do whatever the fuck you need to do to bring that fella out of you. You understand? Torbeck might need help. All right, what can we do? Should we smack you across the face? Should we, I don't know, like... Pull out your scarf or something. Might be able to overcharge the the wit like the wish like conduits, like over pump it into them. I don't know if that. Oh, last resort. Uh, last resort. Last, last resort. Last resort. I think I could probably use my mind to shove the liquid inside of the vial if it came to that. Or I mean, Can could you just, you just explore the door? his mind and open the door to? I could do both at once. Last resort. All right. I never, I don't associate him with a fucking goose, if that's what this is. Oh, then what are we worried about? Well, maybe it's a coincidence. I mean, maybe that's here, but we, look, just fucking be ready, all right? Oh, can't handle much more stress. He doesn't care for geese? Not that I see. He's a bit of a collector, though, so maybe this is just a statue he found. Look, it's a guru. Let's just, we can talk it out. Don't try and summon him, man. Let's just proceed and see what happens. All right? Okay. Fro- somebody else leads the way. Oh well, let's all move forward. All the slacks, 
I'm gonna get behind you. I'm gonna get another okay. burst. I'm gonna very very close. I, I need a little bit more potassium. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. around. I'm watching everything. I'm, I'm Frost, getting ready. Frost, where are you? Hmm? Where are you? I'm using another good berry. Um, I'm hanging back. I'm thinking a lot. I'm in, I'm, I'm in the very back. Okay. You begin to make your way towards the statue of this goose, and you see that they're nestled on uh, nestled on the base of this statue is. A, uh, a stila. A what? A tablet embedded in the base <laughs> with words etched into it. And it is, as you look at this, Gideon, it is not in a language that you understand. Is it, is it pictographs? Or it is, is it not. Just a, it's a language. It okay. is a language that you do not understand. Well... <sighs> Doesn't look like any shit I've ever seen before. Frosty, you, you speak this? Or, or read it or something? Yeah, read so, it is something the on correct it. word. I yeah, look at the... I, mean, I would like you to roll an intelligence check for It's been this. chomped by a fucking poisonous hydra. Can't say one wrong thing. <laughs> Until that banana just now, I was on the edge of death. Uh, just a regular intelligence check? Mm-hmm. Oh, we're just handing out bananas. Twist it. I'm leading the fucking way, Yeah, man. twist it, twist it, twist I it. I need 100%. No. I need it now. I'm fresh out, Gideon. I'm I fresh out of bananas. <laughs> that was really good. Do you think you can read it? One more, one more. My uh, vision is doubling. One more, please. Come on, dig deep. I want to know what the plaque says. Thank you for those bananas, Greg. I feel much better. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the potassium. 20, 23. Yes. Uh. You move forward. None of you are. None of you are super close to this thing. You are keeping your distance from it. You are mm-hmm. about ten feet. As you look and read this, um, this stila, it is large. And at first, you look at it, and this is not a language that you've ever seen. Ooh. It's, it's a form of writing that looks made up. But as you stare at it longer, your mind starts to put the pieces into place, almost as if you've been given a little bit of help. And you read the words. They are the alpha and the omega. They are still part of the alphabet, but I am the silence. I am the thing that is when the alphabet is gone. This you will learn from me. You will learn the way of silence, real silence. Silence was here before all things and will be here long after them. Alpha and Omega, alphabet, silence. Learn from me real silence? I am the silence. I am the thing that is when the alphabet is gone. This you will learn from me. You will learn the way of silence. Real silence. Silence was here before all things and will be here long after them. That gave me swoosh bumps. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty that's funny. That was pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Yeah, we all enjoyed that. That was really good. Does it mean anything, or is that just some cold-blooded shit to say to a motherfucker before you give him a mummy's curse? <laughs> Would I or anyone know that sphinxes are related to riddles, or is that? A I would say this doesn't seem like it is a riddle. Oh, oh! I think you're right. It seems like it's, a, it's, it's a fucking threat. No, it's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <laughs> oh fuck, you're right. <laughs> Do we? Need, that just mean we need to be quiet. Wait, wait. Oh, maybe it's, if it's like a warning. Alpha and Omega, silence. What does it say one more time? I mean, just like real, like, like cliff notes. They are the Alpha and the Omega. They. they are still part of the alphabet. I am the silence. I am the thing that is when the alphabet is gone. This you will learn from me. You will learn the way of silence, real silence. Silence was here before all things and will be here long after them. Gosh, I'm gonna guess that it's time. Time for what, Grico? It's not a riddle. Time to eat more bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling much better, Grico. With everyone's permission, I'm gonna go and speak to the swoosh. You can do that? 
It's just a statue, I think, right? It is a statue. But you are also 10 feet away from it, so you would have to get closer to inspect it further, to inspect the stela that's at its base. Well, it says that we'll learn from it, so maybe there's something else that you can figure out. Maybe go around the back, we'll be over here, but you just, you know, tell us what it says. <laughs> We're gonna learn how to die! <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Frosty! <clears throat> and I'll, I'll uh, have Hootsie kind of walk up to, to, to Frost, it's just behind them, and I'll say, there, there. Don't die. You're my best mate. I cast guidance on you. <laughs> no, for a minute, I get all kinds of good shit. I'll walk up and I will cross the threshold of 10 feet and I will walk directly up to the swoos. You and walk directly up to the swan goose and immediately, upon stepping in front of it, its, its wings unfurl and block the pathway forward. Its beak opens as it animates, though still stone, and you hear these words. Do you come here of your own free will, or do you come by compulsion? I indicate the first one with a uh, number one looking up to her and I bow. Oh, silently. It's clever. The goose's arms, the swan goose's arms do not move as it waits for an answer. <clears throat> My own free will. The arms um, furl back around its body and the entrance is no longer barred from you. As you look up at this stone entrance, you see the carvings nestled into it. And at the very center where the, um, uh, where the capstone of the, uh, of the stone archway is, you see carved into the stone an hourglass. You do a great, Frosty! <laughs> <laughs> Do we hear that or no? No. Do we see it like moving so yeah. far? Um, no. What is what does this look like to us? Does it looks it... like Frost is standing there, staring up at the statue. Yeah, you would have seen me bow. Maybe my mouth move a little bit. Damn. But I would say this easily that he is quiet enough, the sounds of the swamp around you are loud enough that anything that was said you don't see and the statue to you is Unmoving. Is it okay? Do I hear Krako? He's yelling, you can hear him. Oh, I don't know if you can hear me, but Frosty, I, I ask, oh, is everything okay? What do you think he's doing up there? You think he's just like thinking? Just give him a chance, all right? But you have a feeling in the very um, core of your soul that the entranceway is open, at least at this point, only for you. Do I get a sense that if I reached out with my mind to communicate with Grico, that I would be betraying the understanding that I've established with this guardian Ooh. statue? Mm, roll. Ooh. Mm. Good question. Roll wow. a religion check for that one. Ooh. Ooh, let's twist that. <laughs> you, you, twi you twisty motherfucker. Quick, quick. Well, two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's faded. Fade, it's faded. Um, do I, I take the, the higher of the two values or just this one? The higher of the two values. Mm -hmm. 11. Right on the line. You are unsure. Mm -hmm. You imagine with a sphinx that if you knew the answer to a riddle and you snuck the answer to someone else, that that might be betraying the game that a sphinx plays, but this isn't really a sphinx. This was no <clears throat> riddle. This was a question and you answered with the truth. And that's what allowed you to be propelled forward in this. And you don't know if giving Gricko that information would make a difference. You just don't know. I will open my arms wide with my body language and bow again and try to just show deference and openness, knowing that all eyes are on me. And with that limited amount of uh, clue or hint that I can give my friends, 
I'll step forward and into the hallway. You do, and you find the shade of the archway, and it is cool here in this moment. You feel like you can breathe. There is a mounted, um, there's a mounted fountain on either side of the archway here, and a small basin <gasps> beneath it with cool, crystalline, fresh water. Um, you begin to chug and drink, and you benefit from short rest. Oh. Holy smokes! I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see Frost <laughs> drinking, and I'm gonna be like SpongeBob. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I need it. And I start running up, and or I, I kind of say, "Come on, let's go drink." Uncle Frosty seems. He seems to be okay, and uh, we're gonna start. I'll have Hootsie kind of run up. And she'll get a little nervous and start to slow down as she looks up at the big scary goose. Are you trying to just go straight past it? Uh, I think that she'll probably start to slow down and kind of wait to see what happens in front of it. Yeah, what are you doing? Not what I'm going to talk about Hootsie. Oh. So I'm riding Hootsie. Um, you make your way up to this thing, and as you get within five feet, you watch as it changes. Not in a way that you saw it change for Frost, as its arms or its wings unfurl and block your path completely obstructing your movement forward. And as it animates and its beak opens, you hear, do you come here of your own free will, or do you come by compulsion? Well, from a certain point of view, uh, we are here for shade and water under our own free will. If you will let us pass, great goose. Statue Sphinx. Hootsie, bow, as bow. you say, and then Hootsie will... as you say the words, under my own, under our own free will, you watch as the wings um, surround its body yet again, and the pathway opens for you. You can see Frost standing under the under the archway as he's gulping down um, cup of fresh water after fresh water, um, and. You can, you can see the sunburns fading from his skin, what bits of skin you can see peeking out beneath the fur. You can see the um, matted hair uh, that was uh, matted together with sweat and sand is almost magically um, writing itself, and he looks fresh, refreshed, and cool, and comforted. I thank you, great stone beast. Let's go, Hootsie! And we'll ride up, and she'll, uh, just her eyes will get bigger as she sees the water, and uh, I'm doing the same thing. It's like fucking Timon and Pumbaa at the, the bug <laughs> feast. And we just go, and just uh, splashing water, and I'm, I'm going nuts. Here we go. Oh, oh he's so good, Rusty. Yeah. <gasps> All right, fellas. No it looks safe. Let's go. Yeah, what are we waiting for? We're walking right past it. Let's go! The was Let's gonna go. say! <laughs> the three of us approach. The three Together. of you walk up to it. The... Swan Goose's arms unfurl, and it looks Shit. to each of you as it says, Do you come here of your own free will, or do you come by compulsion? I, I don't... Would Kremi think that it sounds anything like, um, Avorna? No. Sorry, Bob. Um, I hate to say it, but yeah, this is free will, yeah? Why are we here? Uh, Torbeck isn't sure. Uh, Torbeck means uh, Torbeck is on a quest. Torbeck has been thrust into greatness. But at the end of the day, Torbeck is following Torbeck's friends. And I guess Torbeck has nowhere else to go. So, yeah. Torbeck chooses to stay with his friends of Torbeck's own free will. <laughs> There's only one thing I've ever done against my will, giant swoos, and this ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to accept all of your answers as the wings um, find their place against its body and the way is open to you. You're able to find yourself beneath the shade, gulping down water, and you all benefit from a short rest. Uh, Torben wonders if there's a right answer or if both answers are right provided they're honest. Uh, you think he just doesn't care? Uh, Jordan gets confused pretty easily. Uh, 
<laughs> you know, some kind of like vestige of an old time where for some reason people regularly compulsed to show up here? I mean, or did we just like sign some sort of verbal contract? We probably just did. We probably know? just mystical side of worship or something. <laughs> oh, for the people of passion. But why is wounds? <laughs> Hell if I know. I mean, maybe like Krami was saying, just some kind of ancient god of the desert, you know? I don't know why it's swoos. You'd think like that crazy Hydra thing, but, you know. Well, is it a swan or a goose? <sighs> well, I think that's kind of the point, man. It's, it a, was both. It's, it's a goose. It's a swan goose. Oh, I guess a swan's a goose? It's just, it's just a, a way to differentiate it. It looks, it looks swan-like. But it's a goose. But it's a goose. So yes, not really Frosty's uh, thing. No, sorry, Frosty. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so are we in a hallway or is it like a you, big it open is, It is just an archway. Um, it's probably about five feet deep. Um, but it you're standing at the entranceway to what is a beautiful courtyard. Um, there are palm trees. Um, dotted about this place. You see a fountain um, spilling out um, from one of the walls, and you see that it leads to what is clearly a connected antechamber that leads deeper into this temple, mm. um, a covered antechamber. But in this open space, what you're looking at now, now that you have rested and you have um, rehydrated and you've provided oh, more man. water to the campestries, because I know that you've forgotten about them as oh, players, oh, but as characters you wouldn't have forgotten. <laughs> um, and so you, um, <laughs> you continue to keep them hydrated and you look out into this courtyard and what you see is a large statue. A large ivory statue planted directly in front of the door to the antechamber that leads deeper into this temple. It is the statue of a rider. A beautiful white horse and atop it is a feminine shape, armored, protector, ready for battle, but with the head of a lion as it seems to guard over the next step into this place. Well. The, the horse is sleek, a white destrier. I would say you're all familiar enough with horses living in a fantasy world. Um, a horse typical for jousting. <clears throat> well, I feel very refreshed and I'm thinking more clearly. I feel like there's no way we're getting out of this without going deeper into the mysterious temple. And I think there's something to learn here. Not just based on this statue and our experiences outside, but the proximity of the magic circle that brought us here. Mm. There may be things that we can learn from that we wouldn't have been able to learn in the Feywild if we are able to ever return. I think you gotta face our destiny, fellas. Music's playing and someone's come to collect. I'm not sure if there was a wrong answer to our question, to our swoose friend. Perhaps it was just preparing us to think about what we need to be thinking about as we enter this space. All right, well, enough of this one at a time bullshit. Let's go together. What do you think? It's oh. Carnival La Crew. Yeah. All right? I'm just having to be out of the fucking desert. Tour Me back too. in Greece. Everyone make sure their water skins are full. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, Hoochie, drink I up. Drink up. Drink up. Drink up. Vessels of water. Okay, let's get all of this off. We don't need it anymore. I'll soak a headband. Wrap it around yeah, my you, neck and You head. have done all of the preparation you needed to do with this freshly flowing water as you step out into the courtyard. And it feels as if the time shifts. You had been, it had been just a little after midday when you left and you traveled for three hours, you, you fought, you got to this point, it's been about almost four hours, but 
as you step into this courtyard, you're met with the light of a bright morning. As you move, t- as you move towards this statue, and you see that similar to the swan goose that you had met outside, there is a stela, a placard, at the base of this. And there are words there that at first you glance at them and it seems to be in that same strange writing, but then all of a sudden, all of you feel them move together into a language you understand and you read. Recount the tales to me times three of a troubled past and what set you free. Let's get that one more time. Recount the tales to me times three of a troubled past and what set you free. Well, you guys think we gotta talk to another statue? It's not barring our way or anything. Hello, lion lady. No, it's sculpting. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> It's very, very nicely crafted. Doesn't seem to be moving. Oh, we need to tell it three tales. No. Uh, My reading of this blank is that we need to tell it the same tale three times. I'm not sure that's how that works. Recount the tales to me times three. Ah. I we need it, Tom's free. It needs to be free tales. It can't be the same one duplicated. But what kind of tale? Well, Why wouldn't it just say repeat to me three tales if it was asking for three tales? Because it's a mysterious statue in a spooky temple in a swamp desert. You think you can only listen to stories if you have a tale? I mean, you gotta tell them all, man. Obviously. Do you have a tale? Well, you have a tale? You can hey, tell one. I was waiting yeah, for it. Yeah. I, well, I remember. You're just always wearing pants. Torbeck has a vestigial tale. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I didn't uh, know you could say if, that word. If you gotta ask, Gideon, you don't wanna know. Oh, I don't have a vestigial tale. I don't have a tale at all. <laughs> it just means that if you ever wanna hurt Torbeck, you just make him sit down real fast. <laughs> I think it means a different kind of tale. So like, not a vestigial tale. No. no like, like a frost tale. Like a story. Like a story. Yeah. Oh. Something that we went through. That What is it? Something about... Uh, we're going to the tale to me times three of a troubled past. And then I... And how you say Recount the tales three? to me times three of a troubled past and what set you free. Oh. I mean... Oh, Torbeck's been through some pretty rough stuff, but Torbeck can't remember any of it. I got one. I mean, does anyone else have one? I got, you know I got one. I mean, I know you, you got, got one. You this know, guy, this I, has got I Big Gid's name all over I it. I got one. No, oh, then tormac has got to take a step back. Well, why don't one of y'all do it first just to make sure, let's let me get a double check to make sure that it's, that's what they're looking for. This lady. Well, what do we call this thing? There ain't no swoos. I don't know. Lion lady? Lion lady? Lion lady. I like lion lady. Yeah, that's that's lady lion. Nice. You know, oh, lady lion. Oh, like a brave son. Let's dame knight. I mean, she looks kind of like a knight. Yeah. I guess you can say sir for a lady knight too. Dame? Be honest. All right. Here. All right. Lady lion. Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, you know, I was living at home. Me and my pa, when uh, you know something, something swirled over the hills. Uh, Gideon, hold on. Did, is, is, is the statue animating? No. I'm in the, I'm in the middle of bearing my fucking heart, man. Oh, wow, this is a tense moment for well, me. All right. The, 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 the previous statue unfurled his wings. This is difficult. I'll go, go ahead. Go ahead. Come on. Pal bubble. <laughs> Lady <laughs> line. I mean, come on. You doing right, fucking right, anything? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Frosty sorry. wants to know. All right. I'll, I'll pause. I'll pause. She is immobile. All right, listen up, Lady Lion. All right. I glance, uh, just she, just like a quick, almost like shameful glance at uh, Grico and Torbeck. Um, 
something rolled over the hills. Just by, by like fucking snow falling from the sky, man. But it wasn't snow. It was ash. This horrible fucking train rolled through. They started just killing people eventually. These creatures, hobgoblins, fucking came out of nowhere. They snatched me up, tried to fight back. You know, they realized there was something a little more to me, more than even, I, I mean, I didn't fucking know my head from my toes at that point, but they saw something. They saw something they wanted. They, they fucking, they took me back to their train. They strapped me in. They attached these things to me. They racked me with a pain I ain't never felt since. It's something, you get something that just starts to draw on your soul, there ain't nothing like it. Anyway, I was years in there, years. But I was paying attention. I was hearing what they were saying. I was picking up things here and there. They didn't think, they thought I was just some dumb fucking hick. And well, I was, but you know, I, I, I learned too. I learned how to work. I learned how to fix things. I learned how to change things. And I took the, the fucking shackles of my imprisonment and I reversed the process. Instead of it drawing the power out of me into the train, it drew the power in. It helped me control it. And well, I snapped the shackles right off the fucking walls. My hobgoblin fucking prison guard came in, grabbed him right around the neck. He started shaking. I, I whispered in his ear that you're not shaking half as hard as your fucking mom did last night. I snapped his goddamn neck. Walked right out of that train coach and uh, killed a couple more along the way. And, uh, that's when I came across Kremi. And uh, sometime later, uh, there's a lot of fucking bad shit that happened before we got there. But <sighs> well, that's me, Lady Lion. You know, in a fucking nutshell, prisoned. 10 years of my life snatched away in my prime and I don't let anything stop me from having a good time nowadays because you know it's just fucking fleeting you don't you don't have it all in front of you always you don't fucking know when just a hobgoblin damn war host is gonna show up and snatch your youth away from you all right is that fucking you know painful tale enough for you the statue moves the legs of the horse kneel as the knight accepts, as the rider accepts your tail. And as her arm raises into the sky, the sword that she holds at her side, the tip of it perfectly in line with the sun at this angle and with the symbol of the hourglass on the, uh, above the door to the antechamber, create a, a perfect angle where the light from the sun hits the tip of the blade and hits the hourglass and you see what almost looks like the falling of the sands of time as you hear a rumbling and the door opens. We've been free ever since. Isn't that right, kid? Goddamn right. I'm gonna put my hand on your shoulder. Other than a couple nights in jail here and there, but you know. Yeah, and crippling dead. Yeah, crippling dead you know, is a yeah. sort of prison, I guess. A lot of fucking fay people are you know, having us do stuff. Bunch of bullshit, but. I never hear, heard the whole story all together like that. I'm sorry, Gideon. Well, it's in the past. It's a long time ago. And we will get Paul Cole to come to one of your weddings. <sighs> just in case. Shut uh, the fuck up. You don't know the whole story. Man. I hate to say this, but just in case, can you repeat that twice so that we get three of them? No, you? look, the door's open. Let's proceed. Is the door like a third of the way open? Or is it, it's all open? The way Do we all open. see it? Mm -hmm. Do we all see the door mm -hmm. open? Oh. Maybe it was just three times as badass as anything you guys would have been able to tell. It was very touching and disturbing, and Torbeck is sympathetic. 
Uh, Thanks, man. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty good at uh, puzzles, especially a word jumble. <laughs> but uh, perhaps it is foreshadowing tales, two more tales we must tell deeper into the temple. Mm. Well, let's go find out. Uh, you first, Grammy. I feel confident enough. I'll start walking. You yeah, make walk. your way Locked into the up. antechamber. And as you step inside, the door closes behind you, and you are shrouded in darkness. This room is completely empty. The sounds of the swamp spill out into this place, even yet. And then you begin to see, almost like a major image playing out in front of you. A shimmering light appears in the room as a young woman takes shape shrouded in black garments. She wear, she wears, or she swears that she has come before you on her own volition and begs for the power to see the future so that she can elude her pursuers and avoid any terrible fate that might await her. As the terror of the unknown, um, as the terror of the unknown to come echoes around you, a blink later and she turns to a small child. In the dead of night, a stranger crept into her room while her parents were away and absconded with her into the wilds. There, she grew up as a prisoner in a remote cabin, having lost her childhood to malevolent captors who viewed her as nothing more than a laborer. One day, after just reaching adulthood, the young woman took a blade to her captors and escaped the cabin and made it to the safety of a city far from the terrors of the wild. However, the damage had tragically already been done, and tragedy consumed the maiden. She is filled with a desire to share her tragedy with children, especially good children enjoying a wonderful childhood that she was never afforded. She began to turn the blade that had been her freedom to take the freedom from the children of the city. This was soon not enough. Er, this was soon not enough tragedy, and the blade began taking their lives. One by one, the maiden methodically murdered one child after the next for months until the local law enforcement finally caught wind. The dread of her fugitive mind was overwhelming as she tried everything to avoid a hanging at the lawman's hand. This terror consumed her and she fled into the woods, entering a small hut and begging for the abilities to always be one step ahead of the hangman's noose. With the tones of tragedy and fear echoing around you, the bubbling pot was filled with the maiden's shrieks as she is turned into a savoring brew. The horrid presence that stands within this room slurps down the birth of this, of this entity and creates a hag, the ability to grant the future. But in that future, the hag saw her own death and now exists in an eternal mourning veil with the billowing form of theater curtains, forever foreshadowing the tragedy of her own life and foretold death. And as this story plays out in front of you, the story of the maiden, it eventually begins to shimmer and fade away, and you see that there is an entrance even deeper in. Another courtyard stands before you, almost the exact same way, but the statue of the woman on the horse is replaced by one of red marble, a stout, um, masculine knight astride it once again blocking the path to um, the next entrance. The head, not humanoid, but that of a ram. All right, this seems fitting that I go now. <coughs> what the fuck was that? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what in the fuck? What the fuck is this place, man? I'll pull out a small, uh, like, purple leather tube, just like a singular thing, pop the top off, pull out a cigar, <laughs> slice off the end with the dagger. What the fuck was that? Did I get a sense that the aesthetic of what she became... Because I haven't seen any you, of the. It is not familiars. of anything that you have experienced yet. You have not seen anything that looked like her. Good God. Is that how you make a hag? I don't fucking blame her. 
A witch's brew? I, uh, I know nothing of hags. That may be very well how all hags are made. This seemed unique. Why did it show us that? I don't know. This was dealing with time. I mean, this has got to be tied to the coven. Was that one of the... Oh, man, I thought it was... Wait, well, future, do we know? Who's future? We know who that is. Is that Endelin? Yes. Moonlight. Oh, I thought she was going to be hot. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was wishful thinking. Oh, God. Uh, uh. Oh. It's going to be all right, Grego. Just shake it off. Oh, oh God. Forgive me. You see? It's there was the hourglass coven symbol on the way in here. And this is not just to do with time. This is about choice. And whether one has the freedom of making our own choices. And whether one has the fate to be doomed or cursed and set on a path. That is intrinsically tied to time. Our past is un choosable in some ways, even if we make the choices in the moment, in the present, and the future is always freedom, isn't it? Or so at least we, so it seems. We talked about to the lawn lady, we said something about the past. But Endelin's all about the future. Are we Well we're at another fucking <clears throat> statue, there's probably a plaque that breaks it all down. <sighs> okay. Everyone, we gotta keep going. Everyone together? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Read the flag. You make your way into this courtyard, and it is the exact same formation as the one that you had left. Everything exactly the same, except for the statue that stands in front of you. And the words on the plaque are similar, but different. Recount the tales to me times three of a troubled present and what set you free. Has the day time the day changed? And as you step into as you step into the um, uh, into this courtyard, you notice that you are no longer in a bright morning, but a red sun beats down on you. <laughs> as you enjoy the feeling of the daylight hours, just slightly after noon, you gaze up at this stout figure astride this horse, and you see that it rides a. The entire thing is made of a red marble. The reddish gold stallion that it sits astride is an uh, intermingling of mostly reds, but as the sun hits it in certain ways, you can see what appears to be a glints of gold in its tail and mane. So, sheep? Well, it's more of a ram. It has a ram's, ram's head. This is a male sheep, I guess. What nice horns you have! You need to tell a story of the present? No troubled present. I will say, for the sake of just clarity, you would understand that a story of the past or a story of the present, um, something that's troubling you currently or something that's troubled you in the past, both of those would fulfill the requirements. Yeah. And what's that is free? Sir Ram headed sheep. <laughs> Sir Ram. R Red Ram. We are in severe debt. <laughs> we have a very troubled present as our accountant named Reynolds <laughs> embezzled Colin. Colin. You have to tell the truth. Embezzled all sorts of funds. And all of the money that we had made was supposed to have been going to one Mr. Remy Guru, who's a very scary big bad voodoo man and what was once Kremi's boss. Kremi had seemed to miss that part, and so 
somehow got all of us swindled. Oh. Yeah, sorry, friends. And <clears throat> so therefore, the big bad voodoo man will be coming to us unless we can pay him back uh, 10,000 gold pieces. Like 100,000 gold. gold pieces. How much? 100,000 gold pieces. Oh. Or else we will be turned into horrible abominations in that swamp that Kremi perhaps oh, yeah. poetically foreshadowed. You just killed, I think. No, no. Well, I mean, I guess from a certain point of view. It's a really unpleasant death. We have a plan to be freed from this troubled present. You see, there is this old man with giant pumpkins. Oh, he, he grew giant <laughs> pumpkins. <laughs> and served a mean pumpkin pie. And we made a deal with him. And then there was a man <laughs> with, from a certain point of view, giant pumpkins. Who <laughs> <laughs> was very handsome. And we made a deal with him too. And then we met a toad woman, made a deal with her. So we are three deals deep uh, into like. paying back our debt. And we're gonna make with deals of as many people as possible to pay off Mr. Guru. And we're gonna do it all by eventually helping out Sabilna who was done dirty by the hourglass coven, but you probably already knew that on account of everything else that's going on. And by making those deals and making good on all of them, it's like paying off one loan with another loan, and eventually you'll catch up. Hopefully, that's what Uncle Globo said, until some bad men came and broke his kneecaps. But I always thought it was good advice. He got better. <laughs> just uses a cane now. <laughs> and between the deals that we find ourselves, we believe that that is how we will find freedom in this troubled present. It takes a moment, but the statue seems to accept your story as the horse kneels, and once again it raises its weapon high. The light from the red sun glints off of the tip of the blade and connects with the hourglass above the door, and the door opens. Well done. <clears throat> Took me a bit to get there, but... I confused myself with how many deals you made. Thank you, yeah. Sir Red Ram. Guru uh, kind of lost the plot a little, yeah, but yeah. we got we took the scenic route. We got there in the end. It's even scary when you put it in perspective like that. Yeah, when you say it out loud. I'm yeah, not, I hate that. I'm having heart palpitations. Uh, Scaring it all in order. We hit rock bottom and we picked up shovels. <laughs> 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 make that may be the most prescient thing you've ever said. Torbeck has moments of clarity. Oh man, that was good. If this uh, pattern keeps up, you understand what we have to do next, right, everyone? Oh yeah. No. Yeah. We have to tell another tale. It yeah. has to be about the future. Oh, I got one. Oh, something else. The conundrum is that we have to tell a tale about the future and what set us free. From the from the future. Why don't we see what it says before we get there? I mean, just nothing bad's gonna spooky something happening in this room. Uh, logical <laughs> enough. Let's let's go, Hootsie. Let's continue. Uh, I'm gonna preemptively close Hootsie's eyes as we walk into this next room. You make your way into the room, and the door ceremoniously closes behind you, and you are shrouded in shadow. As you acclimate to the sounds of the swamp once again, an image begins to unfurl in front of you. As a shimmering light fills the room, and suddenly there is yet another echo in the room with you, this time a middle-aged woman with a needle in her hand, begging and pleading to be a mother and have children of her own. She swears that she is present there on her own volition, and wishes to have her anxiety assuaged and be allowed to, re and be allowed to reproduce to ensure her legacy. In a flash, the woman is young and dreaming of the day when she will be able to have children with the man of her dreams. She is soon married, but the marriage produces no children. Despite every best effort, 
The sorrow the couple feels takes the husband's life and leaves the widow distraught and filled with immeasurable envy for the parents who have children of their own. Every day she feels her broken line, every day she feels her broken line and the loss of legacy that feels inevitable. This envy leads the would-be mother to a terrible hobby that few could ever imagine. Under the shroud of darkness, the woman would steal the sleeping offspring of parents deemed ungrateful and butcher them, stitching them into children of her own. Soon, her cottage was filled with the perfect, quiet children she desperately craved. Eventually, it was not enough. The mother rushes into the darkest wood and enters a small hut. With a desperate pleading to have her anxiety assuaged and be granted the true motherhood she overwhelmingly craved, she too is consumed by a boiling cauldron and drank by the disembodied presence you feel in this room with you. With the horrid rebirth, the newly formed hag, toad-like in visage, finally birthed new life in her own image, as you see plainly before you the echoes of Bavorna Blightstraw and her lornlings. <coughs> I fucking hate those little fucks. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Maybe we do go back and kill him. Oh, we made a deal with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Creamy, this is all your fault. I uh, know, it's all my fault. What happened? We've made so <laughs> many mistakes. Oh, it wasn't her, like, nickname Mommy Lorna. Yeah. Ah! Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Ooh. nothing we can do about the past. <laughs> Anybody get it? You know, because she's sort of, like, related to the past, you know. No, no, she's, she's the present. Oh, fuck. She's We're present. All wrong. We're doing it. Oh. What, what you imagine is so far you've... Uh, you've experienced the maiden and the mother, mm -hmm. but that the timelines of them are swapped. So you saw, you saw the past with what is future, present with what is present, but you figure that you'll see the past with. It's going the yeah. future. The flow of time yes. is passing. All right, let's let's get this over with. I know, I'll, I'll sort of stumble forward. You look proceed. out to a beautiful, bright courtyard, but as you step into it, darkness descends around mm -hmm. you. This mm -hmm. courtyard is exactly the same as the others, except for the statue that stands in your way, a rider in black, a tall, lithe, masculine man astride this horse with the head of a falcon, stands before you on a dark, fierce, black war horse. The sounds of the swamp at midnight surround you. You step close to the statue and you read the plaque on the bottom. Recount the tales to me times three of a troubled future and what set you free. I got one. You want to talk about a troubled future? I think uh, we're in for it, all of us. You know, the good baron, he promises his philosophy in life is a good death. You understand? It's a bird night. It's lovely feathers. It's a nice beak you got. And, uh, you know, he wants the afterlife to be one big party for everybody. And that's why, that's awfully. Learn, you understand? That's why I did what I did. So I made the deals that I made. Because I believe in the Baron and I believe in his mission. Because when I die, I want to have a good time too. I want to spend my afterlife part in with all the other skeleton zombies and ghouls. The problem is, is that if you cross the wrong person, the Baron, or his associates, like Mr. Guru, that's not the future you get. The uh, fellas here got a little taste of that. Not half an hour ago. Uh, if you 
our future, if we don't fucking fix it, is uh, we don't pay Mr. Guru back. And uh, he removes the souls from our bodies, kills us in terrible ways that I couldn't even begin to imagine. And then for the rest of eternity, our souls, they still go to Gede. My mistake. But we don't go to Bone Macabre, no. We don't get to party for the rest of our eternity, no. We go to the swamp. We become mindless abominations gripped by sorrow, anger, torment. And we swish and swill and splash about in the swamp together but it ain't pleasant and I do not want my eternity to be that how do you get free and to get free of that we gotta make it make good on our deal so all we need is 100,000 gold pieces. We have a plan. We execute the plan. Right, fellas? We execute the plan. That's right. And so we're going to get free of that by, uh, you know, freeing Zabilna, uh, inheriting Madric's uh, fortune, and returning those 100,000 gold pieces to Mystic Guru. Uh, and I have a few backup plans, uh, and I'm happy to share those uh, with you, Sir Falcon, if you care. Uh, but I think that's probably good enough. The horse kneels, noticing, uh, seeing the determination in you, the unrelenting determination to free yourself from the deal that you have found yourself in, um, feeling that it has, you have fulfilled the, um, the promise on the plaque. And once again, it raises its, its weapon towards the sky and the moonlight catches on the blade and shoots towards the hourglass symbol above the door. And as you're all surrounded by dark midnight, the door opens. Uh, does that mean the future that you said is going to come true and we're going to succeed? I don't know what it means, Torbett. <clears throat> I really don't. We better fucking succeed. You understand? Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, you've made you that very clear. You all yeah. fucking understand now, right? Yeah, yeah, no. We'll but. succeed, all right. All right. Let's get this over with. If we succeed, do we get to, like, party? There's, like, cool, jazzy skeletons. If the Baron grants you good enough, yeah. Anyway, I can share more information about that later. Let's continue. You can make your way into so the next good. antechamber. Antechamber. The door closes behind you and you're shrouded in darkness. Sounds of the swamp feel, fill your ears and eventually you begin to see yet another story play out in front of you. A sudden shimmering light appears in the room and you hear the voice of an old woman begging and pleading for a chance at life again, filled with regret. As the voice continues to plead, the shimmering light forms into the shape of an old crone with a tattered shawl over her head, faint and translucent, merely an echo that mirrors the echoing voice that sounds so faint and distant, yet ever-present around you. She tells you that she, that she is there on her own volition, and that she needs her youth back, a chance to do everything over again. The form shifts and changes to a younger woman who felt the pressures of her family and society to marry and have children of her own. Despite it being the last thing she ever wanted for herself, her bitterness spills over and dictates every interaction with her children, spitting venom with every word and never giving an ounce of motherly love. In the blink of an eye, her children are grown and have become just as bitter and spiteful as the old crone. Her children now having children of their own, providing the same cruel parenting that she had exhibited. These grandchildren are even nastier, and the crone is filled with venomous hatred for them, even more so than the now-grown children. This hatred, regret, and bitterness leads to one terrible night where all the grandchildren are staying with their grandmother. The crone serves them their dinner, 
but it is filled with the poison that has come to define her entire being. After the bodies of the poisoned grandchildren have been disposed of, the crone rushes through the forest and enters a small hut. In her begging and pleading with regret of letting her life go by living a life she never wanted, she was suddenly within a bubbling cauldron, shrieking as she turned to sludge and consumed by the disembodied presence that fills this room with you. The brew disappears and you witness the birth of the hag that's more toy than person, a baby's bonnet upon her head. She would have her youth back forever. Scabify. Well, I guess that's why they call a granny nightshade. Nightshade! Like poison. Yeah, like poison. Oh, this is a nightmare! All right. All right. Okay, this is what we're dealing with. Uh, I see the trend. I see the through line. Mm hmm. And you do. Because it is in this moment, with all of these doors open, that you see the light from the first moon, or from the first sun to the second to the moon, as it hits all along its path and hits at three points along the door in front of you that shaped like an hourglass, an eight, an infinity symbol. And as the lights connect, the door shakes and opens. And before you, you see something you hadn't quite expected. You see another courtyard, yes, but not the same, not filled with sand. You see a verdant, beautiful courtyard filled with thorny bushes of blue roses, filled with the sounds of life. It is gorgeous. There's a fountain off to the side that is bubbling with crystalline water. And at the very back, an arched wooden doorway that looks almost fairy tale like in its nature, like the door of a castle, like a palace. This is the kind of place that's made of the very heart's desire. And that is where we'll end the session. Yes! Oh boy! I wrote it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. You wrote what down? My prediction. Oh. And I'm right. <laughs> and it feels so good. Holy shit, we're not done. Oh, we're not done. We're not done. I don't even know what we can say besides... Avantress and Chill. What's that, Andy? Avantress and Chill is where we talk about our favorite moments. Oh, baby, and we're going to theorize the hell out of this one. And most importantly, we're going to try to answer some of your questions and comments. So don't go anywhere. We're not doing anything. We're not turning off the cameras. We're not switching anything over. We're not going anywhere. We're going to chill. We're going to have some catharsis. And I'm going to reveal what I wrote down the moment I knew it all. And, and we Schilmeiser. are so close. Schillmeiser. We are so close to our goal uh, for VIPs. I'm going to check the number, but I don't think we're, we're probably not quite there. But we are doing a Kickstarter, launching in early October. Folk Horror Supplement, it's gotta be amazing. Become a VIP and unlock amazing perks if you're just joining us. It's the best way you can support us, it's only one dollar. You get a chuckles enamel pen, you get a Honk Legion mini expansion, and access to the Discord with tons of sneak peeks. If we hit 3,800 by midnight Eastern Standard Time, I will do an extra reveal yeah. in the Discord in our sneak peek channel extra. there. So please, please become a VIP for the Crooked Moon. Thank you so much. Yes! Uh, we're back on Monday with Neon Knights, which is our talk show over on YouTube. Then Wednesday, we get to see what's, dun, through, dun, what's, dun, what's dun. through the next door. What's I wonder what it could be. I have some suspicions that I won't even mention because I think it's gonna. It might be spoilers. Uh, I don't know how much we can say, frankly. Uh, uh, I won't. I won't even reveal my. I'll reveal my guess to you guys. Okay. I won't spoil anything. I'm just gonna tell you the moment that I knew. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Okay. I'm just gonna tell you the moment I knew. That's all I'm gonna say. We are spoiling. 17 away. So yeah, that's nice. Ooh. 17 away. We are okay. close. 17 VIPs. We have time. Yeah, and there's at well, least seven, 30 minutes. There's 17 people in chat. If there's least. 17 people in chat <laughs> that can become VIPs if you all do it. We will hit our goal. Uh, and then after that session on Wednesday, we have on Friday, right? Icebound. Icebound. That's right, the not, not this ice, not the this week. No, no, next no, no, week. no, that's next week. Okay. No, no, weeks no, no, no. from Friday. It's 10 days from now. Yes, okay, thank you. from Friday. Um, we're Icebound. <laughs> it is our monthly uh, survival campaign. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, that's DM by Derek, and it's always a good time. Things are uh, heating up in that. It's fucking good. It's just, it is it's just good. regular intense. It's it's really it's good. just oh, no, insane. It's, it's there are wizards. Intense. They're wizards. Prime! Prime! <laughs> We're gonna hate I'm to so, hear that. Yeah, I'm sorry, folks. I'm out. sorry, folks. No. But everyone who's seen Prime is buzzing oh, and yeah. levitating off the fucking ground right now. Don't know now. what you're talking about. All you people about. who have seen Prime are gonna have the level of levitation into the air right now. Or any I think this is after me. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Well, I got to. I bet you it's pretty close. Not, yeah. no, well, no, you've seen some of it, but for full I don't context. Know anything about the Blue Roses, I don't think. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You think you don't. It's been you foreshadowed. You think you don't. It's been foreshadowed, but the, the true extent of it has not been revealed yet yes, from what you've seen. exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, okay. It's time to chill. With that, we're going to chill. Let's chill. All right.